And good evening, everybody. As always, please let me know in the chat if you can hear me and see me okay. And welcome to part eight. I think this is my eighth video that I'm doing this year. Um, I'm basically doing a whole series of videos which is going to run from now until I die, I think, where I'm going to be playing Too Many Bones on the second Wednesday of every month. It comes around quick. Um, <clears throat> part of me today has been thinking, oh, wow, it feels ages since I last played this and I've forgotten half of the rules. And then another part of me today was thinking, wow, has it, has it been four weeks? It only feels like two weeks. But anyway, yes, once a month, second Wednesday of every month, I'm doing Too Many Bones. I'm mixing it up between solo and multiplayer playthroughs. This is going to be another solo playthrough. But next month... Somebody's actually going to be coming round. As of as of next week, we're allowed in the UK to start having people around the house. Um, so next month, Too Many Bones is actually going to be with a local friend of mine, Emily. Emily's going to be coming around next month. Super excited about that. But anyway, on to today. Today, I'm going to be going right back to where it all started for me. Because Undertow was the first game that I got in the Too Many Bones series. Um, before I then got all of the rest of the stuff. Uh, Too Many Bones Undertow is a standalone expansion. You can play it on its own or you can mix it in with the other stuff. Tonight, I'm actually just going to be using two, uh, I'm going to be using Undertow. I'm not going to be using anything else. So this video is to show you that this is possible. Uh, and I had a couple of messages today from people that said, I only own Undertow. I don't actually own the base game. So yeah, th this video is going to be for you. You are going to see everything today, all of the chips, all of the cards, everything is purely from Undertow. You're not going to see any other content from anywhere else. I'm also going to be playing against Barnacle today. Oh, thank you very much, James, for the super chat. Uh, if anybody is in a generous mood, uh, all of my ad revenue automatically goes to charity, but any super chats that I get, uh, they all go to charity as well. So thank you very much, James. I don't know what the charity is going to be this month, but it's all going to go to charity. Um... And yeah, just a couple of other things before we start. Um, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, these videos are only made possible thanks to the support of my patron campaign. So a huge thank you to all of my uh, patron supporters. And if you like the content that I create and you want to help support the channel, keep it going, uh, please consider supporting me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Uh, and you too can get a job working in a castle. Or is it a castle? Because I now live down south. Anyway, too many bones undertow. We're going to be playing the solo game tonight. We're going to be playing against Barnacle. Barnacle is apparently the easiest of the tyrants that's included in the game. Um, but I'm going to be playing with that one tonight because I'm not used to Undertow and the differences that it's going to bring me. Even though I said this was my first exposure to the game, this was when I was on that learning curve, which actually failed. I, I tried many times to learn the game with Undertow and failed. Um, so yeah, I, I remember bits of it, but, but not too much. So we're going to be playing Duster. Duster is one of two gear locks which is included in Undertow. It is the easiest one to play. It's not super easy, uh, but it's certainly easier than the other one, which I still can't work out how to play. So I'm definitely not playing stanza just yet. Um, I'm going to be playing on the medium difficulty today. Now, the reason for that is a few people have said um, that Barnacle, I am going to find a bit too easy. So what I've done, rather than playing on, what's the difficulty level called? Like heroic, uh, adventurer. So rather than playing on adventurer mode, I'm going to be playing on heroic adventurer. So I start off with one hit point and I get one training point. I haven't yet decided where I'm going to spend that training point. We'll see how we get on. Uh, now, Barnacle, as you will see here, is we have eight days to do it in and we only need five progress points. So this should be a relatively short stream compared to some of the other ones. And thank you very much, Jill, for the uh, for the super chat with a picture of a cat. Oh, I didn't realize you could do little animated pictures with the super chat. That's great. Um, so yeah, with Barnacle, I did actually say earlier on today, because I'm playing solo, I don't mind doing a longer one, but then I've changed my mind and I'm doing the shortest one anyway. So we're, we're doing the shortest one. We only need five progress. We've got eight days to do it in. Uh, and we're gonna read, we're gonna read the flavor now for Barnacle. <clears throat> Uh, little is known about those dwelling in Daylor's aquatic depths. Murmurs of Barnacle's existence linger over every sea, river and ocean. Of course, these tales are often soaked in ale at the local tavern, making the rumours that Barnacle is protecting something of great value difficult to confirm or deny. We'll read the other side when we get there. I know it's something to do with tentacles. That's all I know. Uh, do I have the tentacle chips? Yes, I have the tentacle chips. They're here. So. We should all be set up, all ready to go. Um, and as always, I'm looking in the chat, uh, not for any tactical advice, I'm looking for rules help. So if I make any mistakes rules-wise, there are people in the chat who uh, 
uh, will know the answers to that. Please shout them out as I as I make mistakes. I will make mistakes, uh, but hopefully they will all be picked up in the chat. Um, as far as tactical advice goes, I am looking for tactical advice, but not during the live stream. So please contact me later on over either Slack or Discord and say, Paul, you complete numpty. Why didn't you do that? Okay. Um, but yes, we're good to go. I think we are good to go. Now I'm actually using, so I've got the original version of the Undertow rulebook, which is version 1.0. There is a more up-to-date version of the rulebook than this, but I think I know enough about the game that this old rulebook, this old rulebook, eh? Uh, yeah, I should be okay. But one of the things I keep forgetting to do is every night, every, at the end of every day, I keep forgetting to do this. Anyway, we're good to start. Apart from, I need to spend my training point. Now I've not, to say I've not played Duster before is a lie because I have played Duster when I was learning how to play the game, but it's been so long, I don't really know what to do. So after just saying I don't want tactical advice, which of these skills would you go for first? I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to definitely do what you say, but I'm just looking for advice. We could go for, well, we could go for an extra dexterity. We could go for an extra attack. We could go for an extra defense. Or do we go for Duster's Dagger? Do we go for Flint and Tinder? Do we go for Bottled Smoke? Or do we go for Promise of Prey? Or do we go for Infusion Bracer? So I'm just curious as to, as to what you want to do in the chat. And Jonathan is suggesting level the, the dog. Yeah, the wolf. So if you, are, if you are only watching this video, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, uh, with too many bones, you will level up your character as you play through. And there are multiple different routes that you can take. And each time you play the character, you could choose a different route. Now, from the little experience I've had with the game this year, eight, nine games, um, the, the choice of skill route that you will go through might depend on the type of baddies that you're facing. Now, I'm going to be facing, uh, is it scales, beasts, and goblins today? And if I knew the game better, I'd know which skills to go for based on what I'm facing, but I'm not sure. So Scott is suggesting the dagger. I was thinking the dagger as well. Jill has never played Duster. Um, but yeah, the bottom route is increasing the wolf and making the wolf uh, better. Um, and again, you, you could just keep the wolf as, as the basic wolf or you could level up the wolf. Let's have a look at what Promise of Prey does. Promise of Prey, I roll it and I could get bones or I could get bite, which is Promise of Prey while Nightshade is on battle mat, apply to any body. On its turn, Nightshade may place itself adjacent to this body. This body takes times two damage, or double damage, the next time it is attacked by Nightshade. Oh, okay. So it's basically putting a token on it, and then the next time it's going to take double damage. Uh, scales are hardy. Right, thank you very much, Mark. So I know what hardy does, um, which means bleed is going to be useful. <clears throat> I think bleed is going to be useful against Hardy. Any turn this unit takes damage to its hit points, the total is reduced by one. So if it's got bleed, it will take a damage on its turn. And then, uh, and then on my turn, when I hit it, it can take an extra damage. Okay, I think I'm decided. I think I am decided. I am going to go for Duster's Dagger. So we have a, we have a camera zoom in here. Make sure this is straight. My OCD is not going to be happy there we go so i'm going to buy skill number one duster's dagger um there we go and again if you're new to too many bones uh you can't buy any you, you can only buy ones with a star on it unless you follow the arrow so now that i've bought duster's dagger i could now buy throne knives <clears throat> but i can't buy throne knives on its own whereas promise of pay, prey has got a star on it i could buy promise of prey and uh duster starts with nightshade some of the characters start with uh, well, start with skills already there. This is my initiative dice. I've got four hit points. We're good to go. Right, yes, bleed is nice. That's what I thought. Good evening, Gnome. Thank you very much for joining in. So we're ready to go. Uh, day one, this is my day counter, by the way, my D12. And the gaming rules dice is going to be my progress tracker because I only need five progress. I'm going to keep that over there for now. Right, we also have a side camera set up. Now it's at a different angle from normal. And I'm hopefully going to hold it there. I've been practicing this afternoon and then I'm going to read it on camera. So here we go. Day one. Uh, this is a special card for, for day one. There's a few different ones available. And it says, if I can read it, it's going out of focus. Your move. Breathe. Chaos is everywhere. Guards, mechs, chaos, more mechs, more guards. Deep breath. 
It's time to move, but nothing could be more dangerous. The nearby surroundings, uh, yeah, it's hard to read this. The nearby surroundings are unknown, but there's a guard just up ahead with his back turned. Quick move and anything he's holding could probably be stolen and put to good use. Maybe a few minutes to get the lay of the land would be beneficial, but the opportunity for extra, extra wares would be lost. Deep breath, time to move. Okay, so we have two choices. Um, neither choice is combat. You can see that by the icon here. Whatever this icon is, it's like a shield with feathers coming out of it. Anyway, the two options are find a lookout perch. If we do that, we reveal the first buddy from each buddy stack and cycle it and cycle any to bottom of stacks if desired. Okay. If cycled, reveal the next buddy in that stack. Okay. So we're going to get one training point, but we are going to see quite a lot of information about what's coming. Alternatively, we go for the bottom one where we don't get a training point, but we get two loot. Now, if you look down at the bottom here, we're going to get a loot anyway. So we could go for three loot. We could go for three loot, or we could go for a training point and one loot, and we get to do this. I think I'm gonna do the top one. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna find a lookout perch. Okay, so we're gonna reveal the first buddy from each stack, cycle it to the bottom if we want to, and if we do cycle it, we get to look at another one. Right, now, I don't have this set up to see the buddy stacks. Maybe I can drag it down a little bit. Yeah, let's drag it down a little bit. Actually, I might zoom out a little bit. Bear with a minute. I'm just going to fiddle me with my camera things a little bit. If I move that to there and move that to there. Yeah, that'll do. Let's just move all this stuff off camera. A bit tidier. Uh, and let's move it over there. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Right. So these are all shuffled. Um, <clears throat> and because we're playing Undertow, we have two extra types of baddies. We have the Krellen and the Mechs. Uh, these are only used when the card tells us that they are used. But well, we are revealing the first buddy from each stack. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. We have, now that's a 20 point buddy. We might never come across the 20 point buddy um, because we're playing solo. And the, buddy, the, the battle queue is made up of buddy points equal to the number of characters multiplied by the day. So even when we get to day eight, our battle queue is only going to be eight. So we might never face that one. Go down a little bit more. There we go. So out of these, which one of these am I going to find difficult? So compound. I know what compound does. Compound means that its attack value is equal to uh, the round number. Uh, except in round six. What is it in round six? Is it six? Uh, and it's got careless. So if it ever rolls a bones, it takes two damage. Interesting. Okay, it's a ranged character and it's going to go for everybody. Now, in my previous solo playthroughs, um, the the targeting thing didn't matter because it was I, I, I was the only one there. So I was the strongest. I was also the weakest. And anything that attacked everybody didn't matter because it was just me. But now I'm playing with Nightshade as well. I need to be careful because everything that attacks, if a, if a body attacks everything, that's going to hit both of us. So I'm tempted to put this one to the bottom. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that one to the bottom. And again, that's the decision I've made. But I am curious to know, if you are an expert at the game, what you would have done. <clears throat> now, this one's got equipment. Equipment is a new keyword for me. I don't know what that one does. Equipment. When this unit enters the battle map, roll a d6. Piece of armor, one to two. Increase hit point stat by two. Sharpening stone three to four, increase attack start by one. Or eyeglass, increase any die by two. Okay, <clears throat> so it basically gets a random buff at the start of the game uh, based on a die roll. Okay, so this is a kobold collector. Um, it's got two little people on it. So that will be going for... Uh, does that go for two targets? Let's have a look. Targets. Yeah. Uh, if there is a tie, it will then use it to, yeah, okay. So it will always pursue the closest one. If there is a tie, it will use its, that, 
so it's the weakest. Ranged baddies only target the some baddies will target multiple units, but will not attack the same target more than once. Roll attack die. Right, so it can attack two different people, but they would have to be adjacent to it. Because it's a melee character. Okay, so yeah, it will attack two units if it's next to two targets. Um I mean I could just maneuver myself so that I'm not in that position. <clears throat> Although I think it works better when these two gang up on something. So I think I'm going to leave that one there. Rightly or wrongly, I'm going to leave that one there. It has an initiative of three. And I tend to go before three, I think. So, what's this one? Uh, Spiderbot 4.0. This, this, is, this is the mechs. Okay, so we have the mechs and the Krellin. These are special types of baddies. And again, I don't know if this is any good or not. It's got bleed, and I don't, know, I don't like bleed. I really don't like bleed. I think I'm, and it's got two defense. I think I'm going to put that one to the bottom. Again, rightly or wrongly, I don't know, because the next one's probably going to be just as bad. And I don't like poison either. So I'm putting poison to the bottom as well. Again, rightly or wrongly, that's what I'm doing. 20 point buddy, I'm actually going to leave there, because I don't think we're going to get to that. So I now get to reveal the top one. Oh, it's got mischief. Now, is mischief a problem for Duster? I don't think it is. Mischief is a problem for some of them. Ooh, submerge. Swap, disruption. Right, we've got lots of things coming out. Anyway, what else are we doing? We are, let's take these off. We get a training point and we get a loot. Okay, so let's do my loot first. I'm going to give these a shuffle. Yes, how you summon Nightshade. Yeah, I got that. If I'm damaged, Nightshade will join me at the start of the fight. Otherwise, uh, uh, anytime I'm not at maximum hit points, Nightshade will join at the end of the round uh, and go to the top of the meter. Okay, so we've drawn some non-essential oils. So again, the, the dot in the top left means that this card is from Undertow, and I'm only using Undertow cards tonight. So non-essential oils, three uses. I can re-roll my initiative die during battle setup. Mm, yeah. I can see that that could be useful at times. And now I get to spend a training point. So, yes, I was hoping for bog meat. I was really hoping for bog meat. Uh, Mark is saying, important note on the mech, it isn't defense, it's shielded. Oh, yes, I did read that. <clears throat> yeah, I can now see the icon is slightly different. So that actually comes with two points of defense at the start, but it doesn't roll anymore. Right, okay, thank you very much for clarifying that. Um... Right, what am I going to spend my training point on now? Well, we bought a skill. Do we want to go down and buy another skill, or should we look at increasing things? I think, I think to keep George happy, even if George isn't in the chat. If George, right, somebody tell George I'm going to keep him happy, I'm going to buy a point of dex. There you go. Because I'm a melee character, so I'm going to need to be moving around a bit, so I'm going to buy a point of dex. Otherwise, if you don't have the decks and you keep buying lots of skills, you won't actually be able to use them. Right, we're done. Um, do we get any progress points? We do. We got a progress point for that. So we have one progress point. It is day one. That is the card done. And we now go to the part which I always forget, which I'm not going to forget today. We get to do recovery. So I can basically uh, rest and recover, which I don't need to do. Search for better loot. So I could discard the non-essential oils and see if I find anything better. Now let's have a look at my initiative dice because part of me, when I drew this card, I was like, well, that's not very good. But actually, sometimes I've got a three, a three, a four, five, five, and a six. Sometimes this can be like make or break. If you start off with, with a lower dex than them, so I think I'm going to, and I'm already scouting these. Right, which, which one of these do I want to put to the bottom, if any? So Mischief gets rid of active dice. Now, I don't have much in the way of active dice. So I don't think Mischief is going to be as much of a problem for me as it is for some of the other characters. Bane Death, Bottle Smoke, Infusion Bracers. Yeah, I don't have any of those. So I think I'm going to keep Mischief there. Um, yeah, I don't know whether to get rid of the non-essential oils. What does the chat think? Does the chat think, again, not tactical advice, 
just uh, just what would you do? Would I, should I get rid of the non-essential oils or is it really, really good and should I keep it? Um, at which point I'm, I'm scouting something, but we've already seen what's coming. I guess I could get rid of the Cobalt Collector, but I should have got rid of it before. Because it does target two things. Now this, this Krell in here, that targets two things as well. It removes my defense, yes. Yeah, I, I might not have that much defense, the Mischief. Uh, Nomi saying chuck the oils away. Yeah, I, I think I'm not in... I, yeah, I'm going to do that. We are going to we are gonna search for better loot. So the non-essential oils, oils have gone. And I'm rolling... Is it six? Attack dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I need to get bones. Every bone... I get. Bray saying he doesn't think the oils are essential. It does say on the card, non-essential oils. Right, here we go. We're rolling. And I've rolled no bones. So there we go. I didn't get any. I, I blame the chat for that. Right, that is the end of day one. So we move to day two. And we draw the second card. And the second card is, again, there's a number two in the bottom corner. Uh, the cards for the first two days are special, unlike in the base game, where it's the cards from the first three days that are special. Should I stay or should I roam? Sailing the Cibron means building a raft, a task completed after a few hours of sweaty work. Time to push off. Before the maiden voyage of the USS Nobulus's bane can begin, however, a flaming arrow cathunks into a plank. A glance at the wood's edge reveals a clutch of aspiring pirates perched on a tree stand, knocking more projectiles to rain down from on high. To stay in fight means facing the group with mechs close on our heels, but, but fleeing now will allow the novice marauders to put holes in the raft's structure and in the raft's captain if an enemy manages to jump aboard. Okay, so we have two choices, both of which are combat. If I row, there will, will be trouble. We have a battle queue made up of um, two baddie points, but we are adding a scales, not a scales. We are adding a krellen to that. Now, if it says add, you add it on. If it says include, then it's part of the battle points. Um, part of the baddie points. All baddies enter battle map with a, with a two hit point stat. Okay. Place one wreckage chip on the raft. I'll explain wreckage chips in a minute. So that's our first option. Our second option is, if I stay there, we'll be double. So we are fighting a battle queue of two body points, but we're adding two mechs. Okay, so that's a lot more dangerous. But we do get an extra loot. I don't fancy that. So if I row, there will be trouble. If I stay there, we'll be double. Yeah, basically it's twice as hard, but we do get a loot. I'm I'm going to go for the easy option. Um, I think. Now I'm just looking at what we've got on the board. Because if we go with the top option, we're adding a Krellin, and the Krellin already has two hit points. We are also adding that, which will also have two hit points. Um, whereas if I go with the bottom option, I'm adding that. And that loses a hit point. Oh, I'm not sure. I am not sure. I think I'm going to go with the top one. I'm going to, I'm going to take the safe approach. So the battle queue is made up of two baddie points. So it's that one and that one. Okay, and then we add a Krellin. And whenever Krellin are added, they are added to the top of the battle queue. I seem to remember. Mechs go to the bottom, Krellin go to the top. Just going to double check that. Battle queue, uh, yeah. Krellin and mechs are only added after the battle queue uh, when indicated on the encounter card. Krellin are always placed on top, mechs are always placed on the bottom. Yeah. There we go. Right, okay. So this is the battle queue, and they all enter with two hit points, and I need to place a wreckage chip on the raft. Now, I, do, I, I, I don't know where I can place the wreckage chip. 
Let me just have a look at the rules on wreckage chips. 19. Uh, so a part of the raft has been destroyed. If it ever gets a fifth wreckage ship, then the encounter is uh, the, the, the encounter fails and is unsuccessful. Um, the raft can only be destroyed by a Krellen. So where? Where do I place it? That's the question. You roll the d6 for it. Do I? Where does it say that? <laughs> I believe you, but where does it say that? Yeah, I'm not seeing where it tells me that I roll randomly. It just says place one wreckage chip on the raft. Anyway, while you're letting me know about that, I will set these up. So the Krellen, uh, they don't go on the normal things. We roll a d6 for them. Oh, first of all, we use this side of the map. The map is two-sided. Uh, we use this side if it's a water fight, which you can see here there is a little icon for water. Uh, oh, you were kidding, Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> um, and if it was a land battle, we would use the other side. Okay, so that's quite cool. We get a two-sided two -sided battle map. So we are rolling d6 to find out where... Where's my special ship theory game's d6? To find out where the Krellin is. The Krellin is on position three. Uh, comes into play with two hit points. It's going to be number one, and it goes on to position three. So the Krellin start off on the side positions, and they're basically attacking the raft. They don't actually come on to the board, I don't believe. Uh, the second one, this is lane two. Uh, this normally has three hit points, but it actually has two. This is melee. The melee lane two is here. And then lane three is a goblin devastator. Again, three hit points, but down to two. So this is melee one on lane three. So they've split it up. It, is, it isn't just... Um, melee and range now. You've got the, the, the gear locks in the middle. Uh, stand on the chair, drop, drop the chip from on high and the closest space it lands on is the one. <laughs> Five D6 in front of me. Well, I have these D6, but these are not normal D6. I can't use these. Um, so, <coughs> what's the... Um, <clears throat> You can place it anywhere. Right, okay. So we are going to basically uh, place one wreckage chip somewhere on the mat, and it's up to us. Um, and it costs extra to move on to that space. I, I'm just going to put it here. I don't really know, and I think it heals um, between them. Any dice, yes. So we need to roll any dice for me, which is a five. Uh, the any dice for the Krellen is a four. The any dice for the gob uh, the Cobalt Collector is a three. And the initiative die for the Goblin Devastator is a four. Now on top of that, we do need to roll for uh, the equipment that this has got. So let's make a roll for that. Oh, the any dice are numerical. Oh, of course, yeah, I could just roll them. So one, that means it's got armor, I think. I think it was armor. Where is it? Equipment. Yes, it's got a piece of armor. So its hit points that goes up by two. So it's got four extra hit points. Uh, two extra hit points. It's got four hit points now. None of them come with any defense. I need to read what Submerge does. Uh, if this unit would move, instead roll a d6 and move it to the Krellen starting position. Okay, and now I choose where I'm going to start on the map. Now I am a melee character, so I can, I, but on, on this map I can go on any of these eight spaces here. Um, so what do we want to get rid of first? I mean, detonate means that if on its turn it has... Uh, less than full hit points after moving, which it will have, then it defeats itself. Right, because of this particular scenario, this has three hit points, but it starts with two, which means it's going to detonate itself right at the start. Okay, so that means if I start off here, it's going to blow up and it's not going to get me. It's a bit cheesy. But that's exactly what I'm going to do. Duster can start on any space, not just the eight. Can I? Oh, 
How, is that because of duster? Is that a special rule for duster? <clears throat> what have I missed? Oh, yes, my innate ability. Duster may start on any position on the battle map. He also starts with, not, yeah, right. So my innate ability is that I can start anywhere. Cool. Well, I think I might start there anyway. Because <laughs> I want to be, I want to be able to hit that and I want to be away from this. I think that's where I'm going to start. It actually doesn't matter because, no, oh, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, we're good. Right, okay. So we are on round one and it is me first. Off we go then. Yes, not cheesy strategic. <laughs> the same thing. Right, side camera. Here we go. So I have four dexterity. Uh, do we want to use Duster's dagger right now to try and get rid of this? Or do we just hit it with two attack dice? I mean, I'm definitely hitting it with two attack dice. And I'm definitely hitting it, uh, and I'm definitely using one defense dice. Um, yeah, I've got two attack, one defense. I've got one spare dex. I think I might, oh, do I want to use the dagger? The dagger might be over. I mean, I don't even have to use it. I'll tell you what, I'll roll it, but you don't have to use things. That's the other thing as well, is any, any dice that you don't want to use, you don't have to use. So yeah, these are, these are my four dice that I'm rolling for my four dexterity. Yeah, as Lord of the Slug says, roll the dagger, but you don't have to commit it. Okay, here we go. That counts. Okay, so I've done two damage, and yeah, I don't need the bleed, so I'm going to put that back. I've done two damage, I've got a shield, so that's going to go on there. Uh, and that is it. It's dead. Nice. That's that gone. That's that gone. Nice and easy. De defeated baddie. Right, okay. Next, we have this one. So this moves two towards me. Uh, and I can move it to wherever. So I'm going to move it to there. Because that's the same, same distance away from me. Uh, and then, after its movement... Yeah, detonate. If this unit is at less than full hit points after moving, it defeats itself and deals true damage to each adjacent position. And adjacent, if I have remembered correctly, is only orthogonal. Is that right? Where, where is adjacency mentioned? So yeah, if you can just confirm that, that it, it, it defeats itself, but it doesn't take anything with it. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure adjacency is is only orthogonal, but I can't remember where I read that. Um, it is orthogonal. Yeah, thought so. Right, so that's that one gone. <laughs> I should have gone with a more difficult one. Now we have this kobold. So, um, so yeah, kobold collector. So it just moves two. So we'll, ju we'll just move it there. And that's, that's it. That's the end of the round. Okay. Nice and easy. We go to round two. I am still not wounded. Um... So I am going to spend one dex to move to here. Uh, and then I've got three dex left. I'm going to use the dagger and I'm going to use two attack. Oh, hang on. This moved and even though it didn't attack me, it has a defense die. That rule that I have forgotten before, but I remembered now. So yeah, even if it doesn't attack, it, if it's got a defense die, it still rolls it. And it rolled the bones. So it didn't actually get any defense. That's good. So yeah, I'm not going to go with the defense die. Oh, in fact, I can't because I've, 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 I've got one in and my defense is one. I could. I could take this out and re-roll it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it there. So here's my, here's my three decks spent on dice. Okay, and we've rolled. Oh, well, this is enough. Yep, this is absolutely enough because that is three damage and bleed. So I'm going to exhaust that. I've done three damage. We put a bleed effect on it. Not that one. That one. Okay. And then at the start of its turn, it bleeds for one, which is true damage, and it dies. There you go. I think that's it. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite a successful <laughs> successful first day. Um, yeah, and we didn't take any damage. So nightshade is not needed. Right, okay, so the loot. 
What did I get? I went with the top one. So I get two trading points and a progress. So we got two progress. I get two trading points. Okay, so what are we going to do with our trading points? Ah, right. Okay, so training points. Oh, I'm not sure now. <laughs> two trading points. Let's... Or do we go for another attack? I think so. I think I'm going to go for one of my trading points in attack. So I have to roll to see if I get it. I do. Okay. So we get we get one in one in attack. And do we go down the doggy route? I think I think I might. Because I think the last time I played it, I went down the throw knives in the vibro blade route. So I think I'm going to go down the wolf route. I'm going to choose Promise of Prey, and that's going to get locked in there. Now, that is a skill which I need to use, so it will cost me a dexterity to use it, I believe. It is a locked... So, let me just read how this works. It is a L stroke BA. BA is, you place it on the body. L, you place it in a locked slot. So do I spend a dex to roll it and then put it into my locked area? And then while Nightshade is on the battle mat, I can put it on it. I don't understand why that die goes in a locked area. Let me know. Let me know in the chat before the next day. Okay, but that's what I've done, is I've bought an attack upgrade and I've bought Promise of Prey. Okay, we are now at the end of day two. I don't need to heal, so I am going to scout, and I'm going to scout the one on the one stack. And it is a little cute minikin monkey. If it rolls a bones, it's untargetable. I'm going to keep that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep that, I think. Oh, he's so cute. Mark is saying you can roll it and then apply it later if Nightshade isn't into play. Right, oh, so yeah, if in case Nightshade isn't on the mat, yeah, you can put it in there. Uh, right. Uh, Shifty wants to know which is a better starting point, the base game or Undertow. Now, I, I've, I, I've, I've talked about this a lot, uh, and my opinion is that the base game is the better starting point because the base game is easier. Um, the, uh, in my opinion, Undertow has some extra complicated rules on top of the existing rules, which makes it more complex from the start. Also, Undertow comes with two characters, one of which I find very complicated to play, whereas the base game comes with four characters, two of which are relatively easy to play to start with. So I, I although it's more expensive, I think starting with the base game. And I know Scott disagrees. Um, <laughs> Scott thinks Undertow is a better starting point because different reasons. But yeah, I, I always think base game. Um, Anyway, right, that is the end of day two. Yeah, you probably can't hear this. It's raining really heavy outside and it sounds really nice. It's been raining really heavy all day. Um, yeah, really, really nice. So I'm enjoying that. You can't hear it. Unless, of course, you all decide to play some uh, soundtrack in the background of, of rain music. And then you will hear it. You waffling, Paul. Shut up. Right, day three. Now, at this point, Monica's got sunshine. <laughs> uh, so at this point, as I mentioned, the first two days are special warm-up days, relatively easy encounters get you started. Now we're on to the random cards. Shuffled into these cards, I can't see them, but there are six cards here. Shuffled into those six cards are two barnacle cards, and I don't know when they're going to come out, which is why the cover card is on there. So I'm not even going to look. I'm in England, it's always raining. It's not always raining. <laughs> just 99% of the time. Right, okay, side camera is on and we have the green card. Right, we have Long May You Slumber. When you travel the reaches of Southern Daylor, between the hidden volcanoes, poisonous insects and vicious, vicious poacher traps, it's easy to feel as if nature is hitting you with a sucker punch after sucker punch. Uh, when a chance comes to score a cheap shot in return, you take it. When I was younger, I would have blanched at the thought of killing an enemy as it slept, but I know these dozing marauders would do the same with me, uh, with a smile on their faces. 
If I'm quick and quiet, I can dispatch them and be on my way with their loot. Minus the smile, of course. Okay, so. Yes, drawing from the bottom of the deck I could, but I'm just, I'm just looking away. That's fine. Right, okay, so we've got two choices, both of which are combat. We could work quickly, tread lightly. The battle queue will be three baddie points. Add three points and add a mech. So that means we've actually got effectively nine buddy points. Yeah, so it's three, add three, and a mech. Right, non mech starting on the battle mat are sleeping. Oh, okay. Put a stunned effect die. The damage dealt from an attack dice to a sleeping buddy is doubled. Sleeping buddies will wake the moment any dice are applied to them or when they lose hit points. All baddies will wake if a gear lock gains two or more bones in one turn, or if a non-mech is awake at the end of a round. Right, or give them a fighting chance. The battle queue is baddie points, add a mech, but gear lock has surprise, which means I'll go first. Either way, look at this. We're getting two training points and a loot. Okay, so I, I think, I mean, although this is interesting, and there's a lot of extra rules on here. I'm just going to go with this one. I'm going to go with the bottom option. We're going to give them a fighting chance. So the battle queue is three body points and we're adding a mech. Now, remember what I said earlier on? Mechs always go to the bottom of the stack. So that's going to the bottom of the stack. And we have three body points. So that's three ones. And we know the top one. And there's the other two. Okay, so let's get these on. First of all, on the top, we have the Minikin Monkey with three health. This is number one. Uh, it is a ranged character in lane one, so it goes there. Uh, and that is on initiative four. Okay, then in lane two, we have a chimp acrobat with blind strike one and dodge. Now I was reading about blind strike earlier on. It hits something before it moves. Uh, that is a melee character that goes in lane two. Okay, in lane three, we have another kobold collector. Uh, three health, melee, got equipment. So we need to roll to see what that's got. And then at the bottom, it is a mech. Now the mechs, again, I believe, start off on the edges. Uh, oh, and oh, it's a land battle. The chat is probably shouting at me to flip the mat over. Yeah, this is a land battle, but it's actually this side of the mat. So this was uh, lane one ranged. This was lane two melee. This was lane three melee. There you go. Yes, it is the other battle map. I got it. Uh, oh, we need um, we need this one. This is on three. This one's on four. And the mech is on three. So yeah, mechs, you roll a d6 to see where they're coming in from. Six. So it goes here. This is number four. Three health. Where's my number four chip gone? Hmm. Where's the green number four chip? Anybody see it? Oh, there it is. Okay, right. Now, I can start anywhere because I'm special. Uh, I need to roll my initiative. I rolled a three. Ah, I'm going here. If, I, if only I had some essential oils. Sorry, non-essential oils. So I'm going after this one, which is range, so that's going to throw something at me. And then after this one. Um, so if I was to start here, that is safe from this. Certainly for turn one. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to start there. Yeah. Okay, off we go. Round one, it is, the, oh, we need to do the equipment. The equipment for the goblin thing. See what it's got. It's got a six. What was a six? Equipment, six. 
Uh, it's got an eyeglass. Increase its initiative die by two. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. No, it's not. No, it's going after me. That's not perfect. Ah. Oh. In fact, that's going first now. Right, he's got an eyeglass. So this one, this one's, this one's going to see me first. Oh, do I have surprise? Thank you, David. Gearlock has surprise. Mm, I could kiss you, even if you are 150 miles away. So yes, Gearlock has surprise, which means I get to go first in the... Um, yeah, after setting any for this battle, move all opposing units to the bottom of the any meter. Basically, it means I, I move to the front. Everything else moves to the end. Right, thank you very much. So I'm going first. Now, does that change where I start? Because potentially, I could get rid of this first. I could get rid of this first. Or what I could do is I could hide in the corner and then it can't get me. But then if I do manage to kill this, yeah, if, if I do manage to kill something, that defence die shouldn't be there, um, then it is going to get me. I mean, it's only got two health. Oh, it's got dodge. I need to read what dodge does. This unit's hit point cannot be reduced with attack dice. Oh, hello. <laughs> This unit's hit points cannot be reduced with attack dice. Right. Okay. David just popped into the chat. Hi, David. Thank you for joining in. Um, and Harold says he's just bought the entire Too Many Bones series because of my playthrough with uh, Scott. Yeah, that was a good one. And yeah, Scott will be definitely appearing back on the channel again. He doesn't know it yet, but I assume he will. Yeah, so... I can't hit this one. I'm going to have to put a bleed on this one. But when do we do that? Oh, decisions, decisions. Oh. Oh, this has got this has got that defense on it. So actually that that comes with two points of light armor type stuff already. It's a slightly different icon, if you can see. This, this is an icon with a die, with a square around it, which means you roll the die. This has just got a shield, so it actually comes with two points of defence. Yeah, so that's getting the dagger with bleed on it. But I, oh, I just don't know. I mean, I'm going to have to take some, hit, some punishment from this first. I think I'm going to start in the corner. I think I'm going to start here. That's where we're going to start. And it's my go first because I've got surprise and I'm going to try and, I mean, this has got one attack and one defense. This has got one attack and one defense, but this has untargetable. That means if it rolls a, uh, a bones, not a skull, a bones, uh, it's going to be untargetable for the rest of the round. So, uh, I think I'm going to go for the Cobalt Collector because it can target two things, and if I get damaged and Nightshade comes on the board, I don't want this to attack both of us. I, I think it's a tricky decision between the two of them, but I'm, I'm going to go for the Cobalt Collector. So I've got four Dexterity. I'm just going to use three dice and a defense. Three attack dice and defense. Oh, Adam's in the chat from Chip Theory Games. Hi, Adam. Thank you for joining in. Uh, yeah, and thank you for... Yeah. Thank you for the game. <laughs> right, here we go. Not moving, so I'm not spending any decks on moving. Um, I've got the Promise of Prey. But no, I'm not going to use that just yet. Okay, I've done four damage and two shields. That's like an almost perfect roll. You can't see it, but there you go. I've rolled two defense, which is going in there, and I've rolled four damage, which means the Cobalt Collector is gone. Right, that is me done. But now we have... The Minikin Monkey, that is basically going to attack me for one dice with a defense. Uh, so it's done me one damage, which comes off my shield. And it has a defense on there. Didn't roll any bones, so that's that done. Uh, now we have number four. Uh, sorry, now we have this one on initiative four. So just to remind you, uh, Blind Strike says, before moving, this unit deals hash damage to strongest adjacent unit. So it basically lashes out at something 
before it moves. There's nothing around it, so it moves to here. Is it? Does Blind Strike hit its friends? Oh, wait a minute. I think it does. Before moving, this unit deals hash damage, which is one, to strongest adjacent unit. Yeah, I think it hits its friends. Yeah, it must do. Anyway, it's moving there and then it's attacking me with one dice, which is a two. Ah, so I lose the defense and then I take one damage, which means Nightshade. Hello. Uh, at the end of any round in which Duster has less than full hit points, Nightshade is going to enter the battle map. So Nightshade is going to be entering at the end of this round. Uh, and then we do the green one, which is here. Now, it, this doesn't have a path to me. Uh, which means I think it doesn't move. I think the, I've got this wrong in previous playthroughs, but I think if it doesn't have a path to get to me, is that right? It doesn't actually move, rather than moving to, to get closer to me. And that's the problem when you play too many different games. You misremember rules from one game to another because a different game uses a different rule. Um, Correct. Doesn't move. I thought so. There you go. I'm remembering just about. That is the end of the round. So Nightshade arrives and whenever Nightshade arrives goes to the top of the Eni meter. Where does Nightshade arrive? At the end of an round, Nightshade enters the battle mat at top spot of Eni meter. Um, where? Where, where, where? I don't know where. Anywhere? Can't move on the mech spaces. I believe so. I believe the mech spaces, uh, players cannot voluntarily enter them. And I think if you end up on them accidentally, you have to move away. Um... Oh, there's, there's, there's a swap ability. Yes, it has swap ability. We need to read that. At the end of this unit's turn, it will switch positions with the closest, strongest opposing unit. Ah, hang on. We forgot something. Or I forgot something. So at the end of this unit's turn, it swaps. It switches positions with the closest, strongest opposing unit. That's me. I think that's me. Is that right? Oh, hang on a minute. Mark is saying that it can move on the mech spaces. Can it? Okay, as I say, this is the first time I've properly played Undertow. So I am learning, and this is why I still say the base game is easier because it doesn't have these extra rules for these spaces that are very cool. Um, but. It is an extra overhead of rules in a game which is quite difficult to learn, but once you've got it, he says, having played it eight times and still not got it. Um, right, where is the... Just looking at the rules for those, those spaces, because I remember reading about those spaces while I was eating my lunch. Here we go. Starting positions. Um, gear lock starting positions. No, it's not there. Where is it? There's definitely something in here about the mech starting positions. Gear locks may not intentionally move into a mech starting position. Should a gear lock find itself in one, uh, its its first moved position cannot be a mech starting position. Okay. So. David is saying mechs can move onto and through mech spaces, so there is a path. So it can what? It can get, it can go to there. How do mechs move on positions then? Because I know that when it when it comes on the board, uh, if the, if the place is occupied, it goes up in the next sequence. I mean, this doesn't matter because it's 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 swapping. The question is, is this path? And I don't. You mean can it go from there to there? That seems a bit weird. 
because that's like the other side. Page 17 of the battle section, says David. Thank you. Remember, I've got the 1.0 rulebook. In battle, mechs behave much like conventional baddies. They may move through and onto mech starting positions. <clears throat> All other baddies cannot enter these positions intentionally. If a non-mech baddie is displaced into one, it must first move. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it says that they can move through and onto mech starting positions. But I still don't think that means it can move from there to there. I think it can I think it can move to adjacent spaces but it can't swap from one side of the map to another one. I think that's right. <clears throat> oh, I see what you mean. There's a path round here. Oh right, yeah. It's not yeah. Okay. So it does. It moves two towards me because it can get round here. Okay, thank you. Right. However, it's then got swap so what happens is it swaps with me. Now thematically, what is swap? Is it like a, a weird teleport thing? Um, but yeah, that, that's what it does. There we go. Right, so it moves on lane four. Yeah, so I've, got, I've got it moving towards me. Uh, and then I've swapped it. So I think we're good. I think, I think we, are, we are good now. The question now is, where does Nightshade enter? Where are the rules on? Nightshade entering. Nightshade enter anywhere. Um, Duster and Nightshade uh, melee. And choose different targets. So at the end of the, any round in which Duster has less than full hit points, Nightshade enters the battle mat at top spot on any meter. If Duster has less, yeah. But where? Nightshade is melee, enters melee positions. Okay. Right. Okay, so it follows the normal setup uh, rules. Now, we don't want to put it next to this one. Although, the blind strike one means it's going to actually hit the mech hound at the start. Um, but Nightshade has two, two movement. Nightshade is going to go first. And I want to put Nightshade on where I am. Oh, I think Nightshade is going to go here. Yeah. Did I bring my glass of water? I didn't. Right. I got a glass of water downstairs and forgot to bring it up. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much for Mark specifically, but also the rest of the chat for... I just, I just wasn't seeing the obvious... Oh, yeah, there's a path around there. I was thinking, surely it can't... It's not like Pac-Man. <laughs> right. We are good to go for round two. And we have Nightshade going first. Now, Nightshade, I have full control over Nightshade. And Nightshade can target a different thing to me. Uh, I also have this Promise of Prey. But that's my skill that only I can do on my turn. So right now, Nightshade is basically two movement and two health. Uh, two movement, two health, two attack. Uh, and Nightshade can't damage the gorilla because of dodge. Exactly. So, so Nightshade is going to move to here. Okay, so Nightshade moves to here and has two attack on the Minikin Monkey. And I've rolled two damage, so minus the one shield that it's got, armor, taking one damage. Right, that is Nightshade done. And now it's me. So, Blind Strike 1. Let me just read this for a fourth time. Before moving, this unit deals cash damage to strongest adjacent unit. If it's tied, I assume I can choose. But I'm actually not going to do this. I'm just going to spend, so I've got four decks. I'm going to go one, two. And then I'm going to have two attack. Yeah. Oh, if only I had more decks. Yeah, move two, two attack on the Minikin Monkey. Let's try and get rid of it. Done it. All right, that's that gone. Didn't like the... Cute little fella anyway. Okay, so now it is this one. So blind strike one, it attacks one damage to strongest adjacent unit. It's not true damage, so that comes off the armor. Then it has one dice attacking on nightshade. I've rolled a two, so that's nightshade unfortunately 
gone. <laughs> Nightshade will heal, I believe. Not dead yet. Um, that's that done. And then this one moves two, so it moves towards me. Uh, hits me for two. This might hurt. Yeah, <laughs> if only I had more decks. Don't tell George. Two damage. Oh, I'm down to one health. Oh, wait a minute. This has suddenly gone a little bit. Pete Tong. Yeah. Then it swaps. Okay, round three. I'm in trouble. I am in quite a bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can't really run away that much. Because if I used three to run away, I'd, I'd, I'd at least be out of range of this. But then... I'd have to roll a defence. Which means I wouldn't be able to put a bleed on this. Oh. I could just run away this round. I could just spend all four decks. I wouldn't be able to get away from that. Oh dear. Well, I made it look so easy on day two. On day three, it's not looking good, is it? It really isn't looking good. And I didn't use that promise of prey at all. What am I going to do? Let's have a think about this. I need to get a bleed on this, which means I need to be adjacent to it. But the chances are it's going to... Yeah, okay. Only chance is to kill the mech this turn. Yeah, I mean, I could do th three, three dice on this and one defense. Or two attack dice... A bleed die. Yeah. I think that is my only option. Because any, any moving away, I'm not going to be able to move away and roll the defence and put a bleed on. And it's got two attack. Yeah, I mean, I could go one, two, three and roll defence. Okay, here's, here's another option. I could go one, two, three, and roll a defense. That way, oh no, the blind strike one would hit me. And it would, deal, it would deal me a damage, which would come off the armor that I'd hopefully roll. Then it would actually attack me, and then it would probably kill me. So yeah, I think my only option is to go for it and try and kill that. So I am spending... I've got four decks. It's going to be two attack. It's going to be one defense. And it's going to be the Duster's Dagger. Well, Brian is saying three attack and one defense. Well, I'm, I'm thinking... Oh, no, because I need the bleed for this, don't I? Yeah, I need, I need to save the bleed. You're absolutely right. I need to save the bleed. What am I thinking? Okay, so yeah, three attack and one defense. Okay, off we go. I need four damage and two points of armor. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> oh dear. Four damage, two points of armor. Ask and ye shall receive. And the rain has just come down heavier. Oh, and you can't bleed mechs anyway. Ah, oh, yes, mechs have certain things that they're immune to. Thank you very much. So we've done four damage, which is enough to kill it. Wow. Wow. Okay, right. And then, uh, that's that gone. So then it's the Chimp Acrobats go. It blind strikes and doesn't do anything. Then it moves to here, and then it attacks me for one. And it's rolled the bones, which is nothing. It doesn't have any bonuses for bones or anything. Okay, so, round four. 
The problem now is that I'm running out of time because if we go into the fatigue rounds, I don't think we're going to do this. Yeah, I think we're just short on time. That's a shame. Anyway, I'm just going to stay where I am and I'm going to roll this and nothing else. There's no need to move anything. There's no need to roll anything else. Oh, if this is a two. Oh, no, it can't take damage from. No, what can't it take damage from? Attack dice. This isn't an attack dice. Ah, so if this deals damage. This is actually this is actually it. Yeah, because it's not an attack dice. Oh, backup plan. Yeah, so I can I can roll my. You're right. I can roll my three attack dice because I might get. I might get some bones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, I've rolled four damage, but I've rolled the bones on the duster's dagger. So that's actually no use whatsoever. So I'm not going to use that, and they're going to go there. Okay, so now I'm in trouble because on its go, it blind strikes me to get rid of the one. And then it's going to attack me for another one. So that's my defense gone. Right, we are now on round five. And it's my go, and I have to do the same again. Because there's no point in me rolling the defense. Because if I don't kill it now, round six is the fatigue round, and I die in the fatigue round. Yeah? I think so. Uh, dice with locked slots if you survive. Oh, yeah, so I could roll that, lock it in, and keep it, I think. Yeah, so we're going to have to do this. I need the two. I need the two on this, or the one in the bleed. I literally have a one in three chance. Yeah, I think that's it. I think I've just got a one in three chance. Or I might roll some bones and see what, <clears throat> see what happens with the bones. Nope. I can put a bleed on it, which means it, uh, but then it kills me. At the start of its turn, it takes one damage, uh, and then it does a blind strike one, and that's me out. <clears throat> okay, right. Well, that didn't go so well at all, but that is the end of, so I don't get, oh no, that was a really good one as well. I don't get any of those. I don't get the progress. I don't get the training points. I don't get the loot. Oh, well, you win some, you lose some. That's going to go back. That's going to go back. I am going to choose the recover option um, and go back to four health. I think Nightshade heals as well. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, that's the day. That's the day gone. That's a bust. Yeah, so close. Was it? It was good. I enjoyed that. Right, day four. So oh, we've missed the day. Card is. Uh, is it that way, that way, that way. Spawn spearing. So little is known about the Krellin and their recent proliferation in the Sibron that attempting to avoid them is a difficult venture. Case in point, it's Krellin spawning season. No book or almanac in day lore could have pinpointed this particularly dangerous time of year. Now we've floated right into a Krullin spawning nest. The Krullin here are still small and non-threatening. Soon they'll leave the, rest, leave the nest and begin to assert their dominance over Daylor, Daylor's waterways. Of course, slaying what, we can, uh, slaying what we can as we float by will make their reign over the river just a little less oppressive. Right, okay, so choices are, we have one choice. Uh, let's poke some Krellin. So we place five Krellin face down on the Krellin starting positions. Okay, I'll just go through this. So we are placing five Krellin. I only have four, so we'll take the dead one. Okay, so five Krellin face down on Krellin starting positions. So I'm going to roll a d6 to see which one not to use. Oh, uh, it's a water mat. Yeah. Okay, switching over to the other side. So position six is not in use. Okay. Uh, face down on Krellin starting positions. Set aside ten attack die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, and four defense die, so three, four, okay, as spearing dice. Choose a Krellen, but before revealing, commit an amount of dice to it. Reveal the Krellen and roll committed attack defense dice. If the values on the dice are equal to or greater than the Krellen's hit points, it is speared. Continue this process until no more spearing dice remain. And for each Krellen successfully speared, Gearlock gains two buff hit points. Okay, this is an interesting one. So, what am I doing with my defense dice then? Oh, I can use them as well. And we're just looking for numbers. Yeah, interesting. Right, let's move these cards out of the way. So, which one are we going to spear first? Uh, here is my here is my pool of dice. <laughs> these cards are weird. These adventures are weird. Um, now I'm I'm just going to look at these beforehand because I don't know what these are. So we've got four, four, five, two, and five. Yeah, in fact, we didn't need to roll to see which one it was. It, it doesn't actually matter. Um, okay, so let's go for this one. And I'm going to roll... Do I want to be sure of, of some? Because two buff HP is brilliant. That's a really good card, this one. I think rather than going for a bit for each one and getting none of them, I think I'm going to probably go over the top for the first one. He says. Nightshade doesn't auto heal for full. You have to choose between healing him or yourself, but he does get one hit point. Okay, thank you very much. I missed that. Where does it say that? Oh, put it in your back area with one hit point. Will never be unavailable, but relies heavily on the flint and tinder or rest and recovery. Yep, okay, yep, it says that. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go with this one, and we're going to roll these. In fact, I'm just going to put them there. It doesn't really matter. Because that way we can have the dice on screen. Okay, so we're going with this one first. We're going to reveal it. It's got two hit points and I've rolled four. So that one is speared and I get two buff HP. Okay, and those dice are gone. Right, next one. Uh, so we know the two ones gone. We know that the ones remaining are four or five. So I think I'm going to use uh, these ones. And we'll go for this one. It's a five. And I've rolled five, just. I speared it, got it. So that's that one gone. And that's another two buff HP. And then we're going to use the rest of the dice on this one, which is a four. And I've rolled three. So I didn't get that one. Okay, that was interesting. A lot quicker than the previous one. I think these get shuffled because I used all of them. Um, so I've got four buff HP. I also get a training point. So what are we going to have that training point on? <laughs> well, it's not going too well, is it? So I think I'm going to go with uh, Flint and Tinder. So Flint and Tinder is a very unusual skill because it is used in the recovery phase only. And you basically roll a die and you can heal something that amount. Uh, it's probably a bit of overkill actually getting that now because Nightshade is only down one health. So maybe I'll go for Ferocity instead. Ferocity is continuing down the wolf path. Um, what does Ferocity actually do? Possibly can get training points. Yeah, let's go for that. 
Let's go for that one. Okay. Right. Uh, we do get a progress point for that, though. So we're on three progress points. Uh, and that was day four. So at the end of day four, um, I'm going to choose to heal Nightshade because I'm on full health. And that's the healing option. Yeah. Okay. We're good to go. We are now moving to day five. Remember, there are only eight days. And in fact, there's actually seven because on the eighth day, you need to <clears throat> you need to fight the tyrant if you haven't fought it already. Okay, off we go. The next card is... It's a blue card. We've got a, we've got a barnacle encounter. Um, don't tease the octopus, kids. I caught one. Fish is on the menu tonight. The fish has weird suction cups, however, and the second it got pulled above water, it seemed to keep going and going. And why is it wrapping itself around the fishing pole and now around my throat? Barnacle's tentacles are enormous, and now another has appeared on the other side of the raft. The raft is flying through the air in an instant, and the horrific shriek of the ancient octopus drowns out the sound of the river spray. So we've met Barnacle. A bit early. Anybody want tea, says Scott? Yes, I'll have a cup of tea, please. A milk and two-thirds of a sugar. I'm cutting down. Uh, right, let's kill these suckers. Battle queue is five baddie points but we add number of tentacles equal to party size, starting with tentacle number one and counting up the top of battle queue. One gear lock must start battle in a Krellin starting position. Right, so we have a five point baddie. We have no choice, it is battle queue of five, sorry, baddie points of five, which means it's a five point baddie, which means it's this one. Um, but add one tentacle to top of battle queue. So tentacle number one is at the top of the battle queue. That's coming in. Um, now that is a. Do the tentacles start on Krellin positions? I think the tentacles are supposed to start on the Krellin positions. Doesn't quite say that on here, does it? No, but I think they do. Let me know if I'm right on that, but I think the tentacles go on crawling the starting positions. Position four. Okay. Uh, and then this comes in for health. This is number two. This is melee, range two. Uh, sorry, melee, lane two. That goes there. The initiative of that one is five. The initiative of the tentacle is... Uh, three. Yeah, it's on the Tyrant card, but yeah, Tyrant card for the final battle. Uh, it, it should just say on this, refer to the Tyrant card for... Yeah. Anyway. My initiative. And I am on full, so Nightshade doesn't start off on the board. I'm on five as well. Nice. Where's the round marker gone? There's the round marker. Um, where do I want to start? One gear lock must start battle in a Krillin starting position. Okay, so I'll start here. Why not? Why not start there? If you want to go first, then I'll probably be able to get rid of this tentacle really early. Or do we just start here and... Uh, oh, it's got equipment. This has equipment. And it's a one, so it's actually got two extra hit points. Wow. Okay, so it's got loads of health. Um, part of me is thinking of getting rid of getting this one first and getting getting this one out of the way. Because actually, if this moves two, it's going to move one, two, and it's going to be able to hit me. Or the other option is that I actually start over here, but then I can't hit anything at the start. So, no, I think I'm going to start here. And I think I'm going to ignore this tentacle. And I am going to do as much damage as I can to this at the start. I have to move back onto the raft. Do I have to move back onto the raft? Page 17, wasn't it? Is it page 17? Make starting positions in battle. 
Uh, Gearlocks may not intentionally move to a Corellan starting position. Should a Gearlock find itself in one, it must spend plus one dex to board the raft. Additionally, moving on to a position with wreckage costs plus one dex. So you have to. So basically, I've been put over shore and I need to spend two decks to get back on. Okay, so yeah. I mean, I've been thrown, I've been grabbed, I've been thrown into the water. So if I do that, yeah, I might as well just go there. Okay, and the mischief is nasty because that's going to get rid of my defense dice. Okay. Yeah, we'll just we'll just go for this. So I'm going to roll. I'm not going to use Duster's Dagger. I'm just going to use three attack and I am going to roll the Promise of Prey. No, I'll roll the Ferocity. No, no, no. No. I will spend the rules that we just said. I will spend two decks to get back on and then I'll roll two attack dice. Because that should get rid of the tentacle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to roll two, just in case I roll the bones. Right, off we go. I've rolled two damage, so the tentacle is gone. Tentacle is dead. That done, out of the way. Now we have uh, this goblin, goblin artif art artificer. Artificer, yeah. It moves to there and it hits me for two. I have no defence. If I had defence, it would have mischiefed them away from me. That's three damage. Right. Okay, I'm down to one. Oh no, I've got buff HP. Whew. Right. I've got one buff HP left. I was going to say, I was almost dead then. Right, round two. So because I'm still on full health, Nightshade sits there in the corner playing with his teddy bear or something. Um, right, we're going to go for it. We're going to have three attack dice. And just as dagger. Yeah. I'm, I, there's no point in me rolling the defense, is there? Now, does mischief reduce? Um, does it get rid of active slots or locked slots as well? Active slots, great. So I can lock in promise of prey and ferocity. I think I'm going to. I, I think I'm actually going to take a little bit of a risk. He says. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to use two attack, just as dagger and ferocity. OK. Yeah, you were thinking the same thing as me with nightshade, but I haven't taken any damage yet because I've got I've got buff hit points. Right. Here we go. OK, well, I've rolled four bones, so now I need to look at my backup plan. Pack mentality, I don't quite understand. Uh, oh, fortunate discovery. I've got four bones. I could a absolutely do a fortunate discovery. This is a whole part of the game that I've not seen yet. There is scrag roots, whatever they are, and there is blade dip. All right, things I've not read. Roll this skill when acquired and placed in a locked slot. Reduced by one each time an effect die would be placed on you. Redu right, roll this die. Okay. Just a C back for details. Roll die when acquired and place in locked slot. Reduce by one each time an effect die would be placed on you. Presumably it, it cancels that effect die. Okay, so that's quite nice. Blade dip. Roll this skill when acquired and place in a locked slot. Reduce by one to apply poison to your attack dice before rolling. Bones rolled on attack dice negate this poison. If no bones are rolled, place poison effect on target equal to the number of attack dice rolled. Exhaust when blade dip would reach zero. Okay. Do I want either of those? Hmm. I don't think I do, to be honest. I don't think I want a fortunate discovery. I mean, I could just lock the bones in to try and upgrade to an 8 plus 1. I could do that. That's a little bit risky, though. 
It's a little risky. So I'm, I'm going to put that bones in. I'm going to deal one damage. And I'm not going to use those dice. I'm going to put them back. There you go. What would you have done? It is now the goblins go. Two attack dice on me. And I kind of want this to do two damage. So that Nightshade arrives. Three damage. Oh dear. Ah, this goblin is tough. One, two, three. Okay, end of the round. Nightshade appears there. Okay. So, can somebody help me understand pack mentality? Move Duster stroke Nightshade to a position adjacent to the other. I get that. Duster may also switch targets now. I, do, I don't understand that last line. What does that last line mean? Oh, must take double bones because it's red. Ah, very good point. Yes, and Karthik says, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Karthik. The red bones is different. I had forgotten that rule. Yeah, red bones must be used in your backup plan. So I actually have three bones in my backup plan. Is that how you do it? Do you put that there or do you take that out and put two single bones in? Right, okay, so forget that me keeping ferocity. That's, that's gone. I have, I have cry wolf, which is lose two hit points, <laughs> which would kill me. Uh, I've got backstab. I, I can do backstab. Stab a, stab a baddie that's adjacent to both Duster and Nightshade for two damage. Okay. So technically not there for Nightshade, but it won't matter. Oh, no, it's there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a Nightshade comes in on the front. And... Yeah, it won't matter for the backstab. So here we go. Uh, Nightshade first. Stays where she is. He is. Goes. Two attack dice. Target happens before rolling. Duster is moving, so she'll be adjacent to something else. That's why she's... All oh, right, okay. Right. Two damage onto here. Okay, now it's me. I have four decks. I'm using three attack dice. Promise of Prey. Let's just read Promise of Prey again. No, that's, that's extra damage from Nightshade. So I'm not going to use Promise of Prey. I'm going to use three attack dice and Duster's Dagger. And I'm probably going to spend two bones to do that. Okay, right, here we go. Yeah, that'll do. That will absolutely do. I've done two damage. Uh, and the bones are going to go anyway. So I'm going to use two bones to do a backstab, which kills the goblin. Right. Okay, we survived. Just. Right, now I'm quite badly wounded. I'm also getting really hungry. I don't know what it is today. I had a big bowl of porridge this morning. For lunch, I had uh, Mexican rice and grains with some uh, leftover ham, with some uh, crispy tofu with a sweet chilli coating. Like That was like a big meal in itself. And uh, about an hour and a half ago, I've had a, quite a big curry that Vicky's made, and I'm still hungry. Might have a tapeworm. I don't know. Um, or maybe I just need more ice cream or Jaffa cakes. Or ice cream and Jaffa cakes. Yeah. Anyway, we're done. Um, <laughs> Jonathan's back, got back from a long phone call. Yeah, the chips are reminding me of pepperoni. Absolutely. That's what it is. Um, yeah, we're done. So what do we get? We get two training points and a loot. I'm going to take the loot first. Let's tidy up this mess. The problem with this game, I make such a mess every time I play. We have drawn a hearing sensor. Single use, reveal the top two cards of the encounter deck, put them back on the deck in any order. Okay. I don't think I'm that bothered about that. But I get two training points and a progress. So we're on four progress. We only need five. Two training points. Now, I've not really fully read how Killer Instinct and Alpha Wolf work. Um, but I think... 
I don't think I can buy those, or can I? Nightshade is able to be trained. Once Ferocity is acquired, done. Uh, Duster can use her own training points on Nightshade. Oh, I can. Nightshade has two skill dice of its own, Killer Instinct and Alpha Wolf. The first time Nightshade trains in either, gain that die and place it in the skill mat. One die has two offensive skill paths, right? Uh, we might do that. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Rightly or wrongly, I am going to train in health. Okay, so that increases my health by one. I'm still at lower than my normal. Okay, and then I'm going to spend my second training point on Killer Instinct. So Killer Instinct is die number 16. No, it's die number 12. And I can choose, I believe, whether I go down the, the Timber Wolf route or the Dire Wolf route. Okay. And do I have to choose now? Yeah, because it's an increased die by one in chosen path each time a training point is spent on it. Because these act as uh, counters. I think. Dynam 12, it's that icon. Yeah, it's a counter. So I can either go for uh, one, which basically will, when hit by adjacent body, Nightshade deals one damage in return, even if it is defeated. And then when I level up this one, that's two damage. When I level up again, it back down to one damage, but it's leech. And then when I train again, it is two damage retaliation and then leech. Or I go with uh, this one, which is the Timberwolf path, which is basically Nightshade adds plus one to current attack stat. And then if I level it up again, it's plus two. Right, okay. Yes, I'm going the wolf route. So I'm thinking I'm going to go down the really offensive route. We are going down the timber wolf path because it sounds cool. Um, and basically that is a counter. Nightshade has three attack. That's the way I'm going to play it. Right. Okay. We're done. Uh, in the rest and recovery phase of the day, I don't want to heal to full because I want Nightshade to enter the battle with me next turn. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and search for better loot. Or do we scout? I, I kind of don't like this loot. So it's either uh, rest and recover, search for better loot, or scout the area. I'm going to search for better loot. So we're going to discard the hearing sensor, and we're going to roll six dice. And I've rolled no bones. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to uh, Chip Theory Games about these dice because they're they're faulty. I think I need a, a new set. <sighs> right, day six. Off we go. And it is a green card. Not that kind of green card. Different kind of green card. Right, this is. Hanging with the guys. It's hard to opt out of game night when you're hanging upside down and a pair of kobolds are forcing you to either play with them or pick an appendage for their supper. The other small problem is that the game in question entails dangling by my ankles as I fight to the death with two foul-mouthed monitor tra uh, Molnor traders strung up next to me. The outcome doubles as the game's name. The loser is lunch. The whole situation feels strangely familiar for some reason. If these jerks would only cooperate, we might turn the tables on our captors. Otherwise, I guess we'll see how much damage I can do before the blood in my head knocks me out. Okay, cool. Wait a minute, that's upside down. What's going on here? Why is... Oh, I see, because I'm being held upside down. Clever, clever chip theory games with their cleverness. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. Um, so we can offer the traders incentive. The Molnor quickly formulate a plan. Your part in it is losing the bindings. We have to solve a lock. Uh, 
Um, and if we fail that, we must choose the other choice. If you have loot, dragon scale or whatever, you make right, I don't have loot, so. So why wouldn't I just choose this one? Because if it fails, we then do this. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a downside. I don't think there's a downside to offering the traders incentive. Oh, apart from that, has, has that got a training point on? Okay, yeah, it's a training point there. So it's a training point if we choose the other, the other side. No, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with this one first. I'm gonna go with the bottom one first. We do have a lock picking attempt. We've got to solve this in three attempts. So the chances are this is, this is not gonna work. Um, let's see if I can remember how lock picking works. Right, are we ready? Lock picking attempt number one. It's a four T first. Okay, well there's 4T, but that uses both of the dice. Yeah, so that, how, how do I do a 4T? With only one dice. Do I need, do you have to, have got the save plus one. Is that how you do it? Yeah. Yeah, you use both, yeah. So I, I could use those together and that's the 4T done. But then aren't those dice exhausted? You must roll lock picking die equal to uh, to, to equal or surpass the number for the lot you're working on. Rolled action dice of the same lock may be added together. Used action dice are exhausted for the remainder of the attempt. Any action dice not used to solve your current lock may be carried forward to the next one. Your attempt is over when you have no more action dice to... Yeah. Yeah, you need a three with a plus one. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, yeah, I know I can combine these to get the four... But what I'm then saying is I'm left with one die to do the other two locks. Which would require me to roll saves on the other ones. I think that's right. So, I mean, let's, let's try it. So there's the first lock done. So that's those exhausted. I can't use those anymore. And now I'm on the second one, which is a 2F. And I need the save. If I don't roll the save, I can't do this. Oh, you've got three attempts. Okay, and is the first lock, yeah, your, your attempt is over when you run out of dice. Okay, so I've got three attempts to do the whole thing. Because normally you want to get one attempt, don't you? Yeah, I think you normally only get one attempt. Right, so, oh, where's the thing? Okay, well, I've rolled a 3T. Now I've rolled the save plus one. And I need a 2F. So that's it. That's the first attempt over. Okay. But now we go to the second attempt. And you're right, the first one has stayed open. Because, yeah, thematically, I have unlocked that one. So now I need a 2F. Right, well, there's a 2F. So that's that done. So I'm still on my second attempt. I now need a 3L. There's the 3L. Done. Easy. I don't know what you're all worried about. So we have done it. We have done that. We have lock picked. So we get a loot and a training point and a progress. We're on five. So the loot that I get is night vision goggles. Uh... Single use, shuffle special encounter the Ebonite doorway into your encounter deck if it has not already been added. Not really bothered about that. I don't know what the Ebonite doorway is, but I have seen that it can get added 
from a few different things. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, I've got a training point. I'm going to bump up Killer Instinct to, to two. Why not? There you go. So Nightshade has got four attack. How would you like them apples? Um, no, no, no. A bit of tactical advice is, is, is fine when I'm specifically asking for it. I mean, what you were letting me know is you were letting me know rules-wise. That, that's fine, that I can combine the two things together. Not that I should combine the two things together. Uh, but yeah, the key thing for me to understand there is that that was three completely separate attempts. Normally you want to get one attempt. Right, it's the end of the day. I don't want to heal to full because I want um, Nightshade to start on the, on the board with me. So I think I'm going to discard the night vision goggles and we're going to try again to search for some better loot. Scott says, read the purple text. If you have loot, dragon scale, or Macalabash pipe, you may give it to the Molnor and shuffle special encounter Molnor adventure reference guide. Oh, otherwise, shuffle special encounter a mountain out of Molnor hill into your deck. Right, okay, thank you. So I did keep the special encounters to one side because I knew I might be needing them. It is the a mountain out of a Molnor hill. Okay, so that gets shuffled into here. Okay. Okay, so if you gave them dragon scale or the Mechalabash pipe, then you shuffle one card in there. Otherwise, I'm shuffling a different one in there. Okay. So that has been shuffled under the table. Uh, anyway, I am discarding that. This time, surely, I've got to roll some bones. This is my third attempt at rolling dice. And seriously, I've rolled no bones. So this is 18 dice that I've rolled, and I haven't rolled a single bones. Okay, well, this has been the story of tonight. <laughs> Three attempts to find better loot. I clearly need better glasses. Right, that is the end of day five, uh, day, day six. So we go on to day seven, and this is where I have a choice. Um, I could challenge Barnacle now if I wanted, but I'm not going to. Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to stretch it out for an extra day because I'll hopefully get an encounter and I'll hopefully get some more training points because I don't feel I'm ready for the... Um, yeah, Nightshade ate the loot. That's it. <laughs> Ben's here. Hi, Ben. Thank you for popping in. Right. Okay. We are on day seven. And the card is the best offense is a good de Sorry, the best defense is a good offense. Uh, entering the settlement, I can feel eyes on me immediately. This hidden cave is full of paranoid gear locks, weary looking and seemingly afraid to talk. They're building machinery, and while no sentries watch, they appear to be working against their will. Seeing gear locks in this region is bizarre, and they seem well, well aware that they, they don't belong. Are they in hiding, held under threat? Maybe the makeshift shanty at the back of the cave holds answers. Armaments are everywhere inside, perhaps for Nobulus's machines. Even a working prototype stands awaiting for instruction. As the mechs crash through the walls with me in their sights, I attach, I attach one of the more advanced pieces to my arm. Right, okay, so... We have two choices. Uh, seems like a weapon of sorts. The prototype arm successfully fuses with your arm temporarily. The battle queue will be seven body points, including two mechs. So what that means is that it's mech, mech, and one. Because if it says including, it takes part of it takes those seven. Your attack and defense stat are linked and can be used for either stat. E.g., three attack plus one defense can result in four. Four. Uh, okay, right. Optionally, I go for the bottom one, which seems like a controller of sorts. Uh, the battle queue is seven, but we add an abomination prototype to the bottom of the battle queue. So it's tougher, but we do get an extra loot. At the end of each round, you may take a turn for the abomination prototype. Oh, what? No, I think I'm going to go with the top one. Yeah, I don't want the loot because the loot will be useless. 
Jonathan offers a class on dice rolling for only £999.99. Bargain. Absolute bargain. I mean, I've got I've got £1,000 in the bank, so that'll, that'll leave me with a penny. Um, yeah, we're going to go with the top option. So it's a land battle, uh, and it's going to be seven baddie points in the battle queue, which is two mechs at the bottom and a one-point baddie at the top. Okay, so off we go. Let's flip this over. Flippity over. Uh, we have a one-point buddy on the top, followed by two mechs underneath. Okay, so the one-point buddy on top is a Goblin Dabbler. It's got three health. It's a melee thing that comes in on lane one. Is there, and it has an initiative of two. Then we have a Mech Data, which has got self-repair one and swap. Uh, and it comes with three defense. Wow. Um, so this is lane two, and it's got two health, and it is a melee. Okay, and then in lane three, we have another melee character. Lane three is yellow, which comes with two defense, and has got self repair two and disruption. Okay, so that's those three. And my attack and defense are linked. So I can ba I've, ba I've basically got four that I can use however I want to. Does it slightly bug me that the stitching goes over the circles on the two and the four spaces? Where? There? Or there? No? Uh, I'm not seeing that. Tiny little bit, maybe. Right. My go and Nightshade is coming on, which means we roll initiative for Nightshade. So Nightshade's on a three. I'm on a four. I do need to put the initiatives on for these. The so lane two is four initiative. Okay. And lane three is three initiative. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, where are we going to start? Wow, look at these. I need to do this. I need to do this because I want those trading points. Hmm. Do we try and kill that goblin dabbler quick? But then I'm going to get hit. So this this will go for the strongest. This will go for the weakest. This will go for both. I think we need to kill. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to kill the, the mech data. Because it's got three armor on it and it's got two health. So we'd have to deal five damage to that before it had a go. I don't think I can do that. I mean, we could start. So Nightshade has to go on a melee line. But the problem here is Nightshade might actually get killed before we even get a go. This is the problem. This is the problem. Yeah, because Nightshade only has two health. How much attack? Ah, the Meg Darter only has one attack. That, that's good. But still, that's a bit risky, isn't it? Oh, that is very risky. Oh, come on, Paul. What are you going to do? And remember, you can't put bleed. You can't put a bleed effect on a mech. So the bleed effect. This is tricky. I'm thinking if I go first and I do, I manage to do the promise of prey. Then when Nightshade attacks, that's going to be insane because that's eight. <clears throat> it's four dice, double damage. That's completely insane. Can I put Promise of Prey on anything? Promise of Prey. When Nightshade is on battle mat, apply to anybody. Anybody. So I, I don't even have to be there. I could put it on this one. Be good. Let's do that. Right, Nightshade is going there. 
and I'm going here. How did it, uh, data should be on a mech spot. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. The mechs, I forgot, completely forgot. The mechs start off on other spots. Thank you, right, this one, the mech data is on position three. This is gonna change everything. The abomination prototype is on position four. Right, okay. Yeah, I've forgotten the mechs start off there. Right, does that change everything? Uh, actually, yes, it does. That changes everything. Who's going to go first? This purple one's going to go first, and it's going to swap. So yeah, I'm I'm going to put nightshade here, which is allowed, and I'm going to start here, which is allowed, because I'm special and I can go anywhere. Look at the chart. Which which chart? Do you mean that chart? I think you mean that chart. Yeah, there's nothing special on here. I think it's just that. Maybe you meant chat. <laughs> Maybe you meant look at the chat. Uh, right, I think we're good. I think we fixed it. So I'm going first. And... Uh, what is it i'm actually trying to do i'm i'm going to roll i'm going to roll promise of prey that that's one of my four points of dex i'm going to use duster's dagger as my other point of dex and i think i need defense although it's got mischief oh i hate mischief so i'm just going to go with two attack There's the four. Yeah, there's the four. This is interesting. I, I'm definitely going to be playing Duster next time. Because I, I want to learn how this works. I want to play this two or three times. And I'm going to try different skill routes. Because, I'm, I'm this again, this is the first time I've played it. So this is what we're going to do. Oh, look at all them bones. Bones, then bones, look at all them bones. Well, that bones is going in, okay? And that is a one damage. Right, what am I going to do with these? Um... I did not want the bones on that. I did not want the bones on that at all. This was not the plan. The plan was to do four dice on that with double damage. That was the actual plan. And the problem is putting a bleed on that is only going to reduce it Dying by well, yeah, I roll bones. Yeah, <laughs> I can't roll bones when I'm looking for new loot, but I roll bones now when I don't need them. How are we going to get out of this situation? So, let's have a think. If I was to put the bleed on this, it would take a damage at the start of the turn, and then it would hit me and almost kill me. In fact, this is going to hit me first. Yeah, this is going to move. No, this can't get me. So this will move two spaces and then swap with me. And then the wolf is going to... I was going to attack this with the wolf. Maybe the wolf should kill the goblin darter. But then this is going to come in and this is going to hit me. Oh gosh, this is very tactical. I don't really want to put that bleed die on the goblin data, on the goblin dabbler. 
And again, this, if I lock that bones in, I've got backstab. Now what backstab means is that if I move the wolf to here, then that's dead. But that's dead anyway. If I move the wolf to here, it can just deal that and that's four damage, four dice damage. Yes, pack mentality. I was just looking at pack mentality because I now know what it does. Move Duster and Nightshade to a position adjacent to the other. That'll get me out of the way. Well, no, I'm out of the way of that. Ah, could go here. Okay, there is safe. But that doesn't help the situation. That's night. If Nightshade is going to go here and kill that, then I don't need to move. Because Nightshade, I don't think, is going to be able to kill this. Nightshade is rolling four dice. Oh, it's only got five health. It might work. I might get lucky. I, I might. Nightshade could stay there and attack this, and I might get lucky. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? I know what we do. I know exactly what we do. I use the one bones to move to here. Right, this is what I'm thinking about. Tell me in the chat if I've, got, if I've understood this correctly. I use my backup plan on my turn Let's just zoom out to here. I'm using my backup plan to use pack mentality and I move from here to here. Okay. Then. Oh, no, this isn't going to work because of this. What? Here's what I was thinking about. Forget the swap. Here's what I was thinking about. Then on Nightshade's turn, Nightshade attacks. And if I don't manage to do enough damage, I should have two bones. Can I use my backup plan on Nightshade's turn? to do the backstab ability and deal it an extra two damage. That's, that's the first question. But I don't think I, I can't do that anyway because this is going to move and it's going to swap. Um, so I don't think the pack mentality is going to help me um, at all. Unless I use it to bring... Okay, so it just says, no, I can't. I can't use my backup plan on, on Nightshade's turn. Um, so my other option is that I use my, my backup plan to bring Nightshade to here. But that, that doesn't help either. No, I don't think this helps at all. So I'm going to make a decision um, and I'm not going to do anything. There you go, decision made. And again, you can tell me later on, leave a comment in the video or send me a message afterwards if there is a better thing that I could have done there. So now we do the mech data. This has self repair one, which I'm pretty sure I know what it does. At the start of this unit's turn, place defense dice, totaling one on it up to stat. Okay, so it's it's armor, this this three points of armor, that's gonna repair every turn up to a maximum of three. It's on three, so it doesn't need to do that. It moves two, now it can't get to me. Can't get to me, but the closest it can get to me is there. So it moves to there and then it swaps with me. Oh, my skill dice. Yes, sorry. My skill dice that I didn't use. <laughs> I'll put them back. Uh, so it, yeah, it moves to there and then it swaps with me. Okay. And that's it done. Now it's Nightshade. So Nightshade can move two and attacks for four. We're going to have to try going for this. Yeah, and if we get five, we've been incredibly lucky. I mean, it's got self repair two. Self repair two is amazing. Oh my god, it's got disruption as well. Oh, wow. That's a new one I've not seen before. This is going to be horrendous. Okay. 
The other option is that we move Nightshade to here and attack that. Now that's got five as well, but the difference is this has got self repair two, this has got self repair one. Is it still, are they both attacking for one? They're both attacking for one. Oh, which one do I go for? Daddy or chips? Daddy or chips? I'm going to go with my original plan. My original plan is to attack this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> He's only gone and rolled six damage. Oh, mwah. that was the, uh, these are the new dice that Chip Theory Games have just sent me. They arrived in the post a few minutes ago. Um, six damage, gone, go away. Right. Didn't get anything wrong there, did I? Not missed anything. No. <laughs> oh, breathes a sigh of relief, he says, before he dies horribly. Okay, so now it's this one, and it attacks me for one. One damage. I'm down to two health. Okay, round two. Yep, round two. It's me first. <laughs> we need to get rid of this, although it's only doing one. Okay, I got four decks. I am going to use one for Duster's Dagger. And remember, these are interchangeable because I've got this fused prototype arm. I could, if I really wanted to, have like three defense dice, but then I wouldn't be killing the Goblin Dabbler. So that's one. Ferocity is two. Three. That going to be enough. I think that's going to be enough. So I think I'm going to have a defense. I think there's my four. Yeah, I really need Nightshade to be faster because, as you say, yeah, Glass Cannon, four attack dice, but only two health. So I think this is my attack on the Goblin Dabbler. This is my four decks that I'm spending. Let's see what happens. Okay. Well, there's two damage. The Goblin Dabbler is dead. There is two bones which I have to keep. No choice about that. There is a bones which I will keep. So I've got four. There's a bleed. I'll just put it back because I don't need to use it because the Goblin Dabbler is dead. Okay. Yeah, ferocity. Uh, yeah, it's ferocity. No, it's promise of prey that doubles the damage. Ferocity is a, a free training point if I get it right. You're right. I rolled the wrong one. I meant to roll Promise of Prey there. <laughs> That's what I meant to roll and completely forgot. So, yeah. All right, that's my go done. It is now this. Now, this can attack either of us. But I need it to attack Nightshade because if it attacks me and it rolls a two, then I'm a goner. So I'm going to move it to here because uh, it goes for the weakest character. Well, it goes for the closest. Weak is the tiebreaker. We've both got two health. So I, we, we, I can choose where it goes. So it's going to go for Nightshade. And it's got one attack die. Don't roll a two. It's a one. Right. Nightshade is wounded. But now it is Nightshade's go. And Nightshade has four attack dice. Come on, Nightshade. That's uh, a bone, so I can't do anything with Nightshade's bones then. That's three, which removes all of the armour. 
Okay, so now we go to round three. It's my go. And I'm going to roll. Now, I go before it. I don't want it to have another go. Although, oh no, it's going for the weakest. But it will go for Nightshade. Because I might be able to get my innate plus one. What does my innate plus one do? In addition to Shadow Dweller at the start of battle, Duster may place untargetable or oh, become untargetable. <clears throat> Forever? Until the start of my next turn. Right, okay. Um, so. Do we go all out to try and kill it? Or do I just try and get the six? I mean, I could, I could absolutely kill it. It's whether I can get whether I can get my six bones. <clears throat> because I could, because of this weird prototype fused arm, I could roll four defense dice. Okay, in the hope that I just get six bones. Because there's more bones on defense dice than there is on attack dice. So yeah, I think I'm going to do this. It's a bit weird. So the chat is saying all attack. I, I, if I'm trying to get my innate plus one, I'm better off just rolling the defense. It's got self-repair one. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to roll the four defense. There you go. I've rolled two bones. So I upgrade to innate plus one. Done. And I've got three points of defense there. Okay. So. That's me done. Now it is this. So it self-repairs one. And then it's going to hit the weakest, which is Nightshade. The Nightshade is unfortunately going to get hit for two damage, so that's Nightshade gone. But now in round four, uh, I'm going to attack. Uh, and this time I am rolling three attack dice. And I, I, I will roll the Duster's Dagger. I can't put the bleed effect on it, but if I roll the two... Yeah, backstab. I, I was thinking, but I, I've gone for the innate plus one instead. I, I, as I say, I could have easily killed it, I didn't want to kill it. I was trying to get the upgrade. You can comment on tactics. Um, I just, yeah, I might not follow them and I'm, I'm trying to only look, but yeah. What I, what I want to avoid, for those people who don't know why I keep saying this, is when I started doing these Too Many Bones playthroughs, uh, by the third video, I ended up literally just following what the chat was telling me to do. So it's more on me than you. Uh, it's more... If you continually give me the tactical advice and I, I read it and follow it, I will end up not playing the game myself. So it's a balancing act that I'm trying to find myself. It's not that I don't want the tactical advice. It's just I'm, I need to make sure that I'm trying to make my own decisions and then I'll learn from it afterwards. Jonathan says he thought, he thought I made the best defence. Uh, Matthias wants to know why I'm rolling four defence dice. It's because of this. This particular special card for this battle... My attack and defense dice are linked together and can be used for either one. So basically I've got, for this battle, I have four which I can use between attack and defense. Yeah, I have metal on. Right, here we go. We're attacking and I've rolled... Oh, there's a bones, <laughs> which I don't have to put in. I've rolled three damage. Uh, so that's one off and two damage, which means it's dead. There you go. So the net result is that I upgraded to an eight plus one which I'm happy about. Okay, that is the end of the battle. Uh, I get two training points. Now, we are a bit damaged and we don't have much on health. So I think I might go, I might now go down the alpha wolf training, okay, and really go for it. So with the alpha wolf training, um, it's a defensive one. Um, basically, it's got six, it's a counter with six sides, and it increases my health. It just increases my health. So if I put two points into this, it means Nightshade has got four health. Which does seem a little crazy. It, it means I'm, I'm seriously weak. 
But this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to try it and, 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 and it's fun and who knows if it's going to work. So uh, Nightshade gets another two health. So Nightshade is actually still one health down and I'm going to heal up. So I get three health back at the, at the end of the round. Okay. Uh, and that's it for the end of the round. I've got no loot at all. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So we move on to day eight, which is the last day. So we don't do an encounter. Instead, Barnacle is the encounter. Okay. So we are going to read this card. And we'll see what it says. So we are having a water fight. Okay. Round one. Um, Party of one, use tentacles one to four. Where's that tentacle that I killed earlier on? There it is. So one, two, three, four. Um, place tentacles one to four in Krullen starting positions. I guess we roll. So the first one is going on six. The next one is going on one. The next one is going on six, so I think it goes to five. And the next one is going on one, so it goes to six, which goes to five, which goes to four. I think that's right. I will just check that before the chat tells me I've done it all wrong. Um, starting positions. If position is occupied, choose the next number up in sequence. Oh no, it goes the other way. If four is occupied, it goes to five. I was going the wrong way around. So uh, the six didn't go to the five. Six went to the one, which then went to the two, which means the next one was a one which goes to two and then three. Okay, there you go. Done. Which one was the first one I put on? It doesn't actually matter, does it? No, the actual identifiers for these doesn't actually matter. Okay, so two health. Five health. These are very different. Four health. And one health. In fact, do we need the lane item? Yeah, we do. But yeah, I don't think it matters. Okay, so initiatives. Uh, number two is on three. Number one is on the three. I guess it does matter for this, but I've done it sort of randomly. Uh, number two is on two. Sorry, number four is on two. And number three is on four. Okay. Now, I am on full health. So what that means is Nightshade does not start on the map for me. I need to change the view. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I need to change the view. There you go. We can get rid of this now. And we can go with uh, we can go with that. So yeah, there you go. I forgot to change the view. I was getting all excited. I think that's us set up, and we've got the side camera on as well already. My initiative is three. Okay, so couldn't be worse. Three is my lowest. Um, we had barnacle to the bottom of the battle queue. Now, there's only ever four things on the four enemies on the board at the same time. So Barnacle is on the bottom of the battle queue. As soon as one of these dies, Barnacle is going to come into the game. Tentacles added after round one are placed on bottom of any meter. Barnacle placed on top. Uh, tyrant skills. We'll get to that when we get to it. I don't. I don't want to look at what Barnacle is yet. I know you should do. Um, but yeah. So, Submerge, Submerge, Careless, Shock 1. I need to read what Shock does. Shock. Shockity Shock is not on there because that's the one for the base game. And that's just a uh, Shock. Exhaust one skill dice from target's skills area. Oh! What? So when it attacks me, oh, that's quite nasty. Now these are all melee, aren't they? So they're all melee, but they can only attack the areas next to me. But if they ever attack an area and there's nobody there, the raft 
gets one of these markers and if there's ever four or five of these markers or four of these markers if it gets another one then it's it's game over so well this is going to be tough but i do not want shock i do not want that to come out at all so i think we're going to probably go down here and, and get rid of the little one first or do we just get rid of the bigger one and just throw everything into it and try and hit that for as much as possible before it gets its defense dice on now which one's this yeah this is on three initiative i think i need to hit this as quick as possible with as much as possible oh i kind of want to take one point of damage yeah it's going to be this one so i'm, I'm going here this is where I'm going. <sighs> right. It's the yellow one first. So let, let's just read up on tentacles attacking. Uh, do they count as? Yeah, they count as Krellen because they've got fish icons on. So when a Krellen attacks, oh, I flipped to the right page. They do not move like conventional bodies. They cannot leave the Krellen starting positions intentionally. Um, at the start of its turn, if it has no gear lock to target, it will move to the next Krellen starting position up in the sequence. So this one was at two. Uh, if it doesn't have a gear lock next to it, which it doesn't, okay, it will move to three. It can't go to three, so it moves to four. If it then has a gear lock next to it, it will attack that gear lock. If it doesn't, then it will deal, uh, it will attack the raft. Um, if it doesn't have a gear lock to attack, it still attacks an adjacent raft position with no wreckage. And if the attack is successful, it adds a wreckage ship. Uh, if a Krellin is forced onto the raft, it can only move one position. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's right. I think it would, it, because there's no gear lock there, um, it, it moves to three. Three is occupied, so it moves to four. Let me know if that's right. And now it's going to attack for two attack and one defense oh i've got in eight plus one thank you <laughs> i've completely forgot about that i've got in eight plus one which means i am untargetable which one which one is untargetable yeah spent all that effort getting um in eight plus one and then forgot i think it's the Untargetable. It's the leaf. The leaf symbol. Where's the leaf symbol gone? Where is it? All of these dice. Can't find the one with the leaf symbol. There it is. Right, so I'm untargetable. Right, that means I'm not gonna get hit. Um Ah, yes. Yeah, okay, right. I think we're good to go. So this one is attacking the raft. And as long as it rolls a damage, I was going to try and put this somewhere on camera so you can see it. It has rolled the damage and it's got two defense. So that is part of the raft destroyed. Let's put it there. Okay, so now it's my go. Yeah, it doesn't actually matter because... Um, yeah, because at the start of my turn, it comes off. Okay, so I went all that effort. <laughs> okay, we are going to hit this with everything we've got. I don't have my defense dice. I've got four, I've got four dexterity, but I am going to go for Promise of Prey. Now, there's no point going for Ferocity now. Oh, no, there is. Because I can still heal, I can still get extra hit points. But I need to use Duster's Dagger. So one, two. Three, we need some defense. Four. Okay. Yeah, this damage to the raft is going to be a bit of a problem. Can the raft be repaired? I don't think so. Don't think so. Okay, so here we go. This is what we're rolling. And let's see what we get. I think this is going to go horribly, horribly wrong. 
horribly, horribly wrong. So there's a bonus. Right, there is a times two. So I can put this on Oh, hang on. While Nightshade is on battle map. Oh, I can lock it. That's it. I can lock it in there and I can use it whenever I want to. So that's that done. That's that locked. Right, I've done one damage. And if I want to put a bleed effect on it, I can. Actually, I think I'm going to because there's not, yeah, there's not much else on here. I am going to exhaust that and put a bleed effect on there. Okay, I think that's right. Yeah, so I can't use Promise of Prey, but I've, I've locked it and it actually says on there, even if Nightshade isn't on battle map, Promise of Prey and Ferocity can still be rolled and locked, but they can't be used until the wolf enters the battle map. Right, so I've done that. That's that done. Now it is the blue one, which is this. So this takes one damage, one true damage at the start of its turn because it's bleeding. I love the visual image of these tentacles coming out of the water and I've chopped one of them and there's black ooze leaking out. But it's now hitting me, because it can, the two attack dice. Oh, that was, oh, that was very, very lucky. The bones doesn't do anything. It's done me one damage. Ooh, that's the sound of a wolf, by the way. Um, okay, and it has submerge. If this unit would move, then instead of normal movement, it rolls a d6 and that's where it moves to. It's not moving because it doesn't need to move. Okay, now it's the purple one. Purple one is on position six. There's no gear locks there, so it moves to one. It can't get to one, so it goes to two. And it attacks that position there and deals the damage. And that is that gone. Gulp. Uh, then this one. Moves to two, moves to three, moves to four, moves to five. Moves to five and attacks me. Defense rolls. Did I forget the defense rolls? I, yeah, I forgot the defense rolls on this one. Yeah, you're right. I did. Thank you. Uh, David is remembering when we played together. I, I can't remember that. I know we played. I just can't remember the details. <laughs> I got lucky with the defense rolls there. Um, so I think this one, ah, no. So this one would move and it's got submerge. Yeah, so it actually, so it normally it's moving. If this would move, instead roll the d6. So it doesn't follow the normal movement rules. We roll the d6. I roll the one, but it can't move to one. So it goes to two, goes to three, goes to four, goes to five. It ends up being the same, but if it had rolled a six, that would have been game over. I think. So it goes to there and it can attack me. So it does attack me. It's got one attack. And it's rolled a bones and it's got careless. So it loses a hit point. Wow. This has been massively lucky. Massively, massively lucky. Right. At the end of the round, Barnacle does not enter because there are four still baddies. There are still four baddies on there. However, Nightshade enters the battle and Nightshade is going to go first. Right, we're on round two. Where's Nightshade going to go? Because uh, Nightshade is going to come in. Now, when can I assign this? Can I only assign it on my go? There, there is a rules question. Can I assign my promise of prey die on nightshade's turn i'm guessing not i'm guessing i can only assign it on my turn but let me know um i think i want to put nightshade here and i think because you can't go onto these positions i don't only oh, no, you can you can go on those positions Use it on Duster's turn. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, so the wreckage, page 19, I think, wreckage. Um, wrecked positions cost one deck to move on to. So I can start on the wreckage 
and I could have a little nibble at this because I don't really want to take two attack from that. Hmm. I think we're going to take two attack anyway. Unless I go over here and try and get rid of this. I mean, four attack dice. Am I going to get through that? No, I'm not going to get through that. I need the promise of prey. I need, I need my turn. Oh, wait a minute. There's only two of these left. This is going to be tough. So if, if we sort this side of the board out, then what's going to happen is this is going to move to here and attack that. And then the blue one's gone, and then the purple one, and we could lose. We could absolutely lose this game if we're not careful. I think I need to get rid of these two and then hope one of those attacks me, because that, number two, doesn't have submerged, two will move to three and attack me. Yeah. So I think we need to start Nightshade there. Okay, I've put the bleed on there, which was a little bit of a waste. Or alternatively, hmm. Alternatively, if I start Nightshade here and kill that one, then when this goes, this one will move there and attack me and won't attack the raft. And it's got... Oh, but it's got shock. Okay, so I lose a skill. I lose ferocity, which I think is fine. I think losing ferocity would be fine. Let me just check shock again. Exhaust hash skill dice from target skills area excluding dice used as counters, I would lose ferocity. And I think I'm okay with that. I'm trying to avoid this attacking the raft. I need to think about this. If Nightshade kills this, then this will move to, thank you very much Jonesy for the super chat. All super chats go to charity. So yeah, thank you very much for that. I don't know how much 100 DKK is, but yeah, it's all, it's all going to charity. Um, it's a range space. Yeah, I can't go there. You're absolutely right. I can't go there. It's a range space and it's not a, so I, yeah, I'm going to go there. I, th I think I've worked this out. Nightshade is going to go first. We've got four dice on this. Come on, Nightshade. Come on, Nightshade. And yeah, if you're enjoying this, uh, Jonesy, um, I don't know if you have um, seen any of the other playthroughs, but this is the eighth one I've done this year, and I will be continuing them doing one a month. We've done three damage and a bones. Okay, that's sort of, sort of enough, but not quite. So one comes off and it takes two damage. It means it's going to die at the start of its turn. Okay. Nightshade is done. Now we have the yellow one. So this one. There is no gear lock next to it, so it moves to position five. It can't move to position five, so it moves to position six. It then attacks the raft, and I'm going to attack that position there. Uh, and we're rolling two dice to attack. And I've rolled some damage, so the raft is almost destroyed. Now it's me. Okay, so I'm attacking this one. Yeah, so I'm attacking the green one. I am going to use one defense. I'm going to use ferocity. And I'm going to use two attack. Okay. And I can now put that on there. Okay. So the promise of prey is now on there. Here 
if I wanted to have Nightshade where it was, I could have started directly right for just a... Yes. Okay. We're attacking tentacle number two. Okay. So I've rolled two bones for this, which is actually not bad. I've rolled one defense and I've rolled two damage, which is just what I need. Okay. Two. In fact, I only had one left. One left. Right. So that's me done. Now I have Cry Wolf. Cry Wolf is, I lose two hit points, but I then become untargetable until my next turn. I don't need that. Now we do tentacle number five, which bleeds at the start of its turn and dies. And then we do tentacle number one, where there's no gear locks, so it moves here and it's going for the weakest. Now the weakest is Nightshade. So it's attacking with one dice and it's rolled two damage. Nightshade is down to one health. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Karthik is playing base game tomorrow. Cool. And uh, Jonesy said it's about £10. Really appreciate it. As I say, it will go to charity. I haven't declared which one yet. And yes, there is a backlog of eight, uh, seven other videos for this game. <laughs> uh, a mixture of one and two player. Uh, with varying degrees of success, I would say. Right. End of the round. Barnacle appears. So. Uh, Barnacle appears using the lane one chip. It is a melee character, but it's got eight health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight health. One, two. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and it is a Krellen, so we roll to see where it arrives. It's six, can't be six, so it goes to one. Okay, now tyrants always arrive at the top of the uh, the initiative meter. That that's a bit of a problem for old for old Nightshade who unfortunately is going to get killed, did, did, did. Oh dear. Oh dear. Kind of needed Nightshade to go over here. Yeah. Oh no. No, 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 no. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Nope. So Barnacle attacks. Round three. Poor Nightshade. Nightshade hasn't really done very much. Uh, off to the Sausage Factory. It's a bit harsh, but true. So one attack, one defense, and the special Barnacle dice. And let's see what happens. Okay, well it's one damage, unfortunately. Nightshade is gone. Oh dear, I'm screwed. And tentacle wrap. Target the strongest opposing unit adjacent to a tentacle. That's me. Place target on any available Krellen starting position. Player's choice. Okay, well I'll go here. So it's dragged me into the into the water. Right, okay. That's Barnacle done. Now it's the yellow one. The yellow one isn't next to a gear lock. So it goes to one. Can't go to one, so it goes to two. Now at this point, what does it do now? Because it's... it's um, yeah, wreckage. In battle. So it does that, it does that, it does that. Um... If the do, 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 so if it's no gear lock, it moves to the next screen and starts open the sequence. At that point, if the gear lock has to target, if it has a gear lock to target, it attacks as normal. If it doesn't, it attacks an adjacent raft position with no wreckage. There is no adjacent raft position, so I don't think it attacks. I think that's that done. I think I've I've got round it. So now it's me. So I have to spend 
two decks to get back on. I'm completely screwed, aren't I? Yeah, and then I'm going to hit this. Well, I, I just do three attack. <laughs> three attack, and I got nothing else. Oh, no, two attack, because I've got to move back on. Yeah, two attack. Okay, it's dead. I rolled the bones, so we got four bones. I got a fortunate discovery. I might as well make a fortunate discovery. Uh, and I might as well have my blade dip. Uh, which I roll when I get it. And it's a two. So that goes there. And that was dead. Uh, now let's read what blade dip does again. Uh, blade dip, see back for details. Roll this die when acquired. Put it in a locked slot. Uh, reduce by one to apply poison to your attack dice before rolling. Yep. Yep, we can do that. Um, that's me done. Now it's the purple one. The purple one is gone. And now we go on to round four. It is Barnacle first. Uh, barnacle is not next to a position. So it moves to there, moves to there, then attacks me. Uh, it's got one attack dice. Could I have resolved the Tyrant skill before the attack dice? Good question. Good question. Yeah. What order do you have to resolve them in? Um, well, it's rolled the bones. It, do, it doesn't actually matter, but yeah, that is a good question for future. If I'd have rolled damage here now, could I have applied the effect of this first? And, oh no, I'm not next to a tentacle. But if I was next to a tentacle, could I then be moved away so that Barnacle doesn't actually hit me? So, yeah, in this case, I, th I think this does nothing. Because the bones does nothing. Oh, it, it has an ability to the deep. At the end of each round, if Barnacle is on the battle map and there are still tentacles in the battle queue, there weren't. Okay, that's good. But if there were, it leaves the battle map to the bottom of the battle queue. And it reads it right. Okay. Um, poison hash attack. If you don't roll bones. Yeah, yeah, you can't roll any bones. Um, what's on the garg? I don't know what's on the garg. Yeah, I'm not sure what's on the garg. Oh, the order in which you can apply the results. Is it on the garg? Body turn sequence. Determine targets, move, skills, roll dice, resolve the roll, e.g. attack and defense. So, I guess you can resolve them in whatever order you want. Um, but yeah, this does nothing because it's tentacle wrap, but I'm not next to a tentacle. So nothing happens. So that was that was quite a good round for me against um, against Barney, Barney the Barnacle. Uh, however, this one moves. Uh, it moves to three, moves to four, and again doesn't attack the raft because the raft is already damaged. My go, I am going to put everything I can against Barnacle. We got three, and I'm going to try and use my blade dip. Now, if I roll the bones. Uh, yeah, if I roll the bones, it's ignored. But if I don't roll the bones, I get a poison effect die on the target equal to the number of dice rolled. So I'm rolling three dice, and I'm going to tick down the poison, and we'll see what happens. Uh, do I want to roll a defense? No. No, I've just got three attack dice, and that's all I've got. Fortunate discovery comes to your mat. Uh, it does, but when you get blade dip, you roll it and put it in there. I, th I think that's right. Okay, I could have saved Nightshade. Okay, it's, it's useful to have a look later on. Uh, roll dice on body, apply total roll to target, and then resolve any trick skills. Oh, there's some spaces missing. Sp sp spaces missing there. <laughs> I guess you're copying and pasting. Yeah, copy and pasted from the rule book, so it's missed out the spaces. So place rolled on body, apply total rolled to target, and resolve any triggered skills. Tyrants will then resolve their tyrant die. Okay. So blade dip. Am I, am I doing blade dip correctly? Because it says you, you put it in the locked position as a counter. And that, that's what I've done. Roll this skill when you acquire it. Done. Place it in locked slot. 
done and reduce by one to apply poison. I think I've done it right. I, th I think I've done blade dip correctly. Okay, so I'm rolling three attack dice. I've got one spare dex, which I don't need to use. And if I roll no bones, we get poison on it. I got no bones. Oh, look at this. I got four damage. Minus its one armor is three. And I put a poison three on it, which is insane. That, that's, that's good. That is very good. Right, round five. That's what we needed. Barnacle first. Barnacle takes three damage. And then the poison ticks down to two. I mean, the poison alone is going to kill him. So he dies at the start of next round. Yeah. Okay, so now it's attacking me. One attack, one defense, and the special tyrant die. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've rolled the bones on the defense, which is good. It's done me one damage. And it's rolled the heart, which is tentacle wrap again. So that does nothing. So we got away with that. Now it's the yellow one. The yellow one isn't next to a gear lock, so it moves to here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this off, actually, because that's not doing anything. Uh, it then does shock on me, but I don't have any skills for it to shock. And it then hits me for two. This might be over. Oh, defense. Thank you. I forgot I had the defense. Yeah, because that's going to save me now, actually. Come on, Paul, why can't you roll it in the tray? It's big enough. Yeah, so that actually defense saved me because that's three damage. I am down to one health. You know what that means? I've lost to this encounter. Oh, what a turn of fate. Because we go to... It's my go. But we're going to go to round six and the fatigue damage is going to kill me. Now, hang on a minute. Isn't the rule that if you kill the tyrant, you win? Yeah. And I know a few people were saying they house rule that because they don't feel it's right. But I think the rule is if I kill the tyrant, I win. So on my go, I am going to use three attack dice and a defense dice. Not that the defense dice is going to help me against the fatigue. You're not going to believe this. I've rolled two bones. I've done one damage. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Fatigue is not on your turn. I believe fatigue is at the start of the round. Well, it's been fun. It's been a roller coaster this evening of big highs and big lows. But there's the one damage. Barnacle is down to one health. We go to round six and everything takes a damage. Barnacle's gone, but I've gone as well. And I think... That is a loss. I've got, yeah, I had backstab. Brilliant. Backstab is no use whatsoever. Um, yeah, to do backstab, you need nightshade on the board. So I think I lose. I think I've had this before where both the tyrant and me um, took fatigue at the start of the round and lost. So yeah, I think that is a loss. I don't, I don't care that this was a loss. This was, it's a draw and a rematch. Yes, let's, <laughs> I, I want to play this again. I want to play this again right now. I'm not going to because I only got four hours sleep last night and I'm tired. But this was fantastic. I made some very big mistakes. I know I made some big mistakes. I will learn from those mistakes. I totally won't learn from those mistakes. Um, but yeah, we had, we had some really good luck. At, at some critical points and then we had some really bad look at some critical points as well and right at the end I was thinking hang on a minute I've gone through I've put the double damage on this 
and then we lost Nightshade. And we lost Nightshade. And I would like to say, uh, I would like to ask um, earlier on, was it Aegest who said, I didn't have to lose Nightshade? If you can let me know, uh, either now or afterwards, at, uh, you know, and put the timestamp in the video as to what I could have done at that point to, to save Nightshade. Because, yeah, I definitely do want to know. Um, I will be all night replaying the, that battle. Yeah. I mean, that battle was fantastic. But, yeah, what I was saying is, you know, I'd, I'd put the Promise of Prey on this one. And I thought, brilliant. This is, this is it. Because Nightshade is going to get to it, attack it, and deal four dice doubled, right? That's going to be eight damage. That's going to get rid of the biggest tentacle in the game. And that's, that's going to get rid of it. And then Barnacle's going to appear and we just need to deal with Barnacle. And then I got the unlucky three damage on Nightshade and Nightshade died. So Aegest says, I could have saved Nightshade. Let me know how. Um, and then it was like, okay, so it's all over. And then suddenly I got super lucky. Well, I got, I got the Fortunate Discovery, which allowed me to get the Blade Dip. I then got super lucky when I attacked Barnacle and I did... Um, I did three damage to Barnacle with three poison on it. And I thought, well, this is brilliant. Barnacles. And then it was like, oh, no, I'm going to die from fatigue. And they're like, no, it's my go. All I needed was two damage on three dice. And I, and I didn't get them. So I used tentacle five instead of three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I actually, it's a void game anyway. Tentacle three is here. I was using Tentacle 5 accidentally. Yeah, I'm only supposed to have used Tentacles 1 to 4. I thought I had these stacked in order, and I clearly didn't. I took the top four off the stack and didn't check, and it was quite, to be fair, where's Tentacle 5 gone? That's Tentacle 4. Where's Tentacle 5? There's 1. There's 5. Yeah, it's, a, it's pretty obvious it's a five. Yeah, oops. And Tentacle 5, compared to Tentacle 3, is much tougher. Yeah, so I would have done that. I don't mind. I, I really don't mind. I played with a, I played with a variant rule, uh, which you can find in the back of my rule book, written in ink, which says uh, swap. It, uh, it's a bit like Cloud Spy, you know, where you get variable set up at the start. Swap over Tentacles 3 and 5. As I say, it's an official house rule that you will find in my rulebook. I, I don't mind. That was, that was really, really good. Uh, really enjoyed that. And yeah. So before everybody disappears, I uh, just wanted to say um, a big thank you again to all of my patron supporters. We've had a few super chats uh, coming in tonight, which is great. All of that money goes to charity. Um, but if you do want to support the channel uh, and help me carry on making videos like this, I rely on the support of my Patreon campaign in order to help me create videos like this uh, and to keep the channel going. Because I do do a lot of playthroughs during the day as well. Uh, and that takes me away from my paid work. Um, so the Patreon support helps with that. And you can see a link in the bottom right, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And as I said before, I do have now a professional working relationship with Chip Theory Games um, regarding rulebook writing. Uh, but this is not a sponsored video in any way. So although I'm a big fan of them as a company and I'm a big fan of the game, uh, yeah, they're not, they're not paying me anything to create these videos. They have promised me a piece of cake uh, at the next convention, but, you know, we'll, 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 see, we'll see when we eventually get to, <laughs> to another convention. Right, that is it for now. I will be back at least next month, right? Like, like always, I want to play this, play this again. So I'm not going to promise anything. I fancy replaying this entire game again with Duster and with Barnacle, right? If I can fit in another one of these at some point in the next couple of weeks, uh, I will. It probably won't be in an evening because my evenings are fairly booked out for the next few weeks. Uh, but maybe one afternoon uh, I can do that. But on the 9th of June, I will be playing a two-player game with somebody in person. Emily, who lives literally a stone's throw away from me, uh, who hasn't been allowed to come round for a year and two months is coming round on June the 9th uh, and we're going to be playing a two-player game of Too Many Bones in person, um, which I'm really looking forward to. Not sure whether I'm going to stick with Undertow or if I'm going to go back to the base game. I'm tempted to go back to the base game because it'll be Emily's first game. So I, I, I'll probably go back to, to just the base game um, for, for the next playthrough. 
But anyway, we're all done. We're finished. What have I mentioned? I've said thanks to everybody. I've said it was brilliant. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Lots more playthroughs, lots more stuff coming over the next couple of months. Take care, and I will see you next time. Good night, everybody. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.